in a world crying out for a top 10 show. John Roca and Matt Nost are here to bring you the top 10. Brought to you by the Schmoes No. Take it away, boys. Welcome, everybody, to this week's edition of the Top Ten Show. I have to say, this I'm looking forward to this episode. <laughs> yes. Maybe more than any episode I've ever looked forward to in, in our entire history of doing this show uh, for a number of reasons. A, the topic. Yeah. But also the guest that we're going to have True, on the show. It's double barrel. Yeah. It is double barrel. It really is. <laughs> I asked John a long time ago, hey, I got a buddy. I play basketball with him. Yeah. Knows movies backwards and forwards. Yeah. He's been in a million things, but he knows movies backwards and forwards. And uh, see him, see him, see him. I was like, hey, wh- why don't you come on? This yeah. gentleman or that's sitting right across from us is patiently waiting yeah. as we babble. <laughs> <laughs> why don't you come on? We'd love to have you. And then the problem yeah. is, is when I asked him is when we hit that breakup, we, were, we went back to after four months or oh, uh, yeah, three yeah. months, we were every week and it was holidays. Yeah. And I was like, eventually he hit me up and was like, are we doing this? Oh, wow. He hit you up. Yeah. That's well, great. Just, because Even I had better. promised so long ago. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, man, I'm the jerk here. Because normally we get them on super quick. Yeah. Anyway, man sitting across from us. I'm Matt Nos, by the way. Yeah, I'm John Roca. Uh, I play basketball with him usually once a week. You know, Matt has talked about yeah. his Saturdays playing basketball we play on the show many, many times. It's uh, it's awesome. I look forward to it every week. Right. He's been in a million movies. I mean, exaggeration. Give me, give, it's, 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 there's it's, a literally a number. <laughs> Step Brothers. <laughs> Yeah, that's not a million. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. And a character yeah. that you assume is going to pay off. I love that it just now, it just idiosyncratically just comes in <laughs> as the, what, blind neighbor? <laughs> yes. And then uh, uh, knocked up. I love it. I, I looked at your IMDb. Yeah. You had two episodes of GH. Yes. General Hospital. General right, Hospital. Right. It's like a Correct. Right. storybook career. He's a, re- he's a recurring on Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yes. Right. He was in Unaccompanied Minors. <laughs> that's right. Yes. Knocked up. Dude. Wrote the definitive Pistol Pete Maravich book. What? The definitive. May I sit in cross with us? What? That's yeah. the other thing I love about Wayne. I got to read that. We love basketball. Yes. We love basketball. Like L O V E basketball. So yeah. do I. And this man so do I. Exactly, yeah. knows more about basketball than, <laughs> than I do. Yes. Or it's, it's impressive. Uh, a man I like to call gentleman. <laughs> Mr. Wayne Fetterman. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Thank Wayne you. Fetterman. Thank you. It's one hand clapping. One there hand. I'll give you the other hand. No, it's fine. Between it's too late. It's too late. Pair it's of hands. too late. It's too late. I hope my voice is distinct enough because yes. there's three guys talking. You're fine. Sometimes on a podcast, Please. it's hard for the listener to d- differentiate the three voices. Question. So I'm hoping. Just one question. Ooh. Does your voice sound anything like our voices? Well, they're male. Ma- Mine is <laughs> <are> male. <laughs> they're That's male. True. I don't want to use the word uh, super masculine to describe my voice, but a lot of people have. Yeah, trust me, Oof. you should be five feet away from it. There's a timbre. <laughs> it reverberates. I don't want to short sell uh, Wayne a little bit. He's also an incredibly prolific writer. Other than the book, he's also written for Late Night with Jimmy Fallon, the Independent Spirit mm-hmm. Awards, the Critics' Choice Awards, yeah. the Creative Arts Emmys. I didn't what, even know the, that people wrote for those. DGA the TV this year? Land and the this DGA. Year? Right yeah. this year. I'm, doing, I'm in the middle of it. Literally came from the build, the DGA building wow. on Sunset, on Sunset. Boulevard. Mm-hmm. With the theater yeah. downstairs, their offices are upstairs. <laughs> With the theater and the thing, thing and the writing. And the directors and the, the guilds. Look, and you the... name it in this business, this man has done it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he really has. And uh, uh, one of the awards we're giving away is t- called the Schaefer Award. Okay. And I go, okay. is that for from Franklin Sha- Schaffner? Oh, I Schaffner, mean, Schaffner, right. Schaffner. They go, yeah, Sh- Franklin J. Schaffner. Director, Ooh. very underrated director, mm-hmm. directed okay. Papillon. Papi- yes, of course. Paton, Paton. very close, even yeah. pronunciation yeah. of those two movies. <laughs> and then, of course, the famous The Planet right. of the Apes. Right. In 1968, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes it did come, did come out in 68. In Ooh. the summer of 68, I think it... It sounds about right, those damn dirty apes. Yeah, the summer of 68. Yeah, because I remember... Uh, as a kid, there was an argument with my brother about what was a better movie, that or 2001, which came out in oh, April, yeah. I believe, or something. All right. Where'd you guys settle? 
Well, he's yeah, he's a Kubrick nut. Yeah, and uh, are you also, John? Oh yeah, yeah, Massive I love fan Kubrick, of Kubrick too. Yeah, 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 we both do. Okay, yeah, yeah. well, it's hard to argue against Kubrick, but I I think as a movie, yes, two thousand one is more visionary. It's more, mm. it's definitely more ambitious. Sure, yeah, but as a movie, beginning, middle, and end, I prefer the Planet of the Apes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it is, and I think it's a more rewatchable movie. In my head, I was like, okay, well, but then there's also, I've seen Apes more than I've seen 2001, Mm -hmm. for you know, without a doubt. So, how old were you, I guess, at what age, roughly, were you when uh, Apes came out? Because that's before your time. It's like nine, I was just something like that. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, over the summer, that'd be a movie you're looking forward to. I was still a sperm in my bed, my dad's No, they sucker. made us. <laughs> oh, yeah, of yeah. course, of course. Yeah. But they made, you know, the, I mean, I had older bro- brothers mm-hmm. and sisters, so I, they were like, we have to see this 2001. I still don't understand the ending. Oh, no, it's a spa- no, it's because it's, it's so it's ambiguous. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's space baby. It's up to your interpretation. Yeah, yeah absolutely. that's not my kind of movie. <laughs> it depends. There no, I don't of... like ambiguous movies ever. Okay. I like oh, wow. movies where you're like, oh, I get it. Okay. That made that, and that was yeah. the guy that did that. But sometimes right. you, don't right. you like walking out with the question to say, <laughs> no. Okay, what is this? And then. <laughs> <laughs> for me. I think for a philosophical, it puts you in a different mind space. <laughs> okay. 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 So okay. you're like, okay, what is? What is the potential reality or the possibility? So sometimes I like that in a movie where it's not definitive because it asks questions of me that I take with me. Yeah. Okay. 2001, right. I don't know, maybe, maybe it does, but it is such a wide, well, open question. Yeah. And the subject we're talking about, uh, there are certain, I mean, the 70s were full of kind of open-ended mm-hmm. stuff. You know, Give me like, an example. Like French Connection. At the end, we don't know what happens at the end of French That's Connection. That's why there's a French yeah. Connection, That's what the, too. Right, which is a, of a lesser quality. <laughs> and it's also no a question. question. Why well, there shouldn't have been a French Connection, too. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't need an answer to that question. <laughs> but, you know, but and, and, and 2001 is just as the 70s is starting to happen. I mean, I almost envy the fact you lived through these and got to don't, see these yeah. don't have in the to. theater. This I look at it time. the other way. I look at it like I wish I was like younger and then got to experience oh. whatever the godfather right. or oh. casablanca and that you know and just, sure yeah. it must be incredible to see those movies yeah the more yeah. classic ones yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think agree. so yeah. but i might be wrong no and when matt uh told me he said wayne fetterman i said wayne fetterman i know wayne fetterman yeah. i've seen him in a million freaking things my favorite um, is why do you keep saying a million <laughs> It's literally, there's here's a list. What is the number? What here's, is the number? Here's why it's a million. What is the number? A year, year and a half ago. The number is 87. A the year, number is 79. Ago. 79. Do you remember the commercial, the Hertz commercial? I believe it was. Of it course. Was Enterprise. Yeah. Not exactly. Yeah. Yes. That is I our know. man right here. Uh, he was talking about uh, the mortgage <laughs> banker thing earlier off, off mic, and I was like, wait, have you seen? Have I seen you in a commercial for mortgage banks? You, or seen, that? I, no, I like, no, 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 I've never done You've that. You've seen him in a million was, commercials. I used to do yeah. a lot of commercials. Yeah, that's what I've play. seen. The you. last one I did was for with Kenny Rogers for Geico. Oh, wow. I'm in that poker Oh, yeah, scene. the poker oh, table Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, that was really fun. There's quite a number of uh, uh, what I would, and I hope you don't find the term offensive, but character actors that I've seen do stuff like that mm-hmm. in, in the poker. Like, there's a number of those character actors yeah. in that poker scene. Yeah, there's with, a guy so from it's great. The, the office. Is yes. In there. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. I used to do commercials every once in a while. Oh, you did? Matt's yeah, done me as well. Yeah. Done. I, I, I used to do yeah. them more. Yeah. I, they couldn't, they, I was too burly of a Latino. I never got cast in anything, but occasionally I'll get it. I would get one national a year. That's all I would get. Uh, that can, still that can pay for yeah. your yeah. year. Well, yeah. I, I don't know about anymore. Yeah, not anymore. Not like it used to be. Yeah. Yeah, back when you were doing it, Wayne, it was like 100000 a year you could get. Nah. It. But now it's like thirty if you're lucky. I, uh, I talked to a couple guys, and they're like, if I can book two to three nationals a year, and they would yeah. book six, but two to three, and I'm, I'm Set. easy living. Wow. Yeah, That's easy nice. living. If you got six, you're like, you should be banking that, investing it, do something. Because right. back in the day, when I moved here, and they're like, yeah, it's starting to peter out a little bit. <laughs> it was more and more cable or just internet only or hotspot, or you're like, all right, yeah. you know, take what you can get. And I'm bilingual, so it's it, when you do Spanish stuff, it's even half. It's half oh, I thought of, you said you were Italian. No, 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 no. no. I'm bilingual. I'm uh, Spanish. So, so it's the beauty like, of casting him. Yeah. When did he... You didn't just... Can we play the tape back? You yeah. didn't just say burly Italian guy? No, oh, burly Latino guy. Latino. Oh, yeah. Latino. I misheard yeah. you. Sorry. That's all right. My bad. Uh, wow. Well, that's, that's a beauty. You I should, feel like you I... should have been cast more because you can pass for Latino, sure. yeah, Italian, like Southern right. Italian especially, right. uh, Middle Eastern potentially. Sure. Uh, like mm-hmm. a million other mm-hmm. things. So like, clearly, I just universal. didn't have the talent. That's clearly the point. <laughs> that's what we're getting to here. Uh, Wayne, when you start... like uh, Wayne, uh, let's give a little bit of background over you. Where are <laughs> yeah. you from originally? Well, I mean, 
actually <laughs> born in L.A., but oh. moved. Oh. A very, I have no memory of it. Okay. But I know I was born in the same hospital that Robert F. Kennedy died in. Wow. The, it was called the Hospital of the Good Samaritan. Uh-huh. Where was it? I think it's up... It's, it's in still here? It's in Hollywood. Yeah. I think it's a okay. Kaiser now. I believe it is I, I thought a Kaiser. Yeah, yeah. The way you set that up, I was like, oh, it ceased to exist. Where was it? Right. Uh, um, I think it's a Kaiser now. I'm, okay. I'm not... Someone can... Okay. You yeah. have fans that would Sure, that they will Google thing. it. Don't sweat it. And then, but then moved back east, and that's where I became a lifetime Washington Redskin fan. Right. Grew, spent my early childhood mm-hmm. through elementary school in Silver Spring. Right. Then moved to the most racially insensitive name for city in the country, <laughs> Plantation, Florida. Oof. Plantation. <laughs> Yikes. What that's, do you have in the panhandle? No. Where's no, Plantation? Right in, but it's in Broward County. It's right in, next to Fort Lauderdale. Oh, oh. okay. And... Uh, mm-hmm. Went to, believe it or not, South Plantation High. I'm from the less progressive part. I never would have guessed that. I'm from the that. south part of Plantation. In a million years. <laughs> in a million years. Where do you think Wayne went to high school? <laughs> south Plantation High School right outside of Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> Boom! Nailed it. Nailed yeah, it. I know I seem... <laughs> you, you could give me a million places on the East Coast. <laughs> yeah, I buy East Coast. You have a New, yeah. you have yeah, a New York I, East I, Coast vibe Potentially Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. Like potentially a few I other know places. I have that vibe. I have yeah. that vibe. Yeah. And then traveled up five days after graduation. Yeah. Uh, by the way, just quick side note, graduated... In a high life fronton, does that mean anything? High life, like the game high life? Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Baton? That's where they. Okay. A fronton is the building where they play high life. Oh, anyway, nice. that's where we had our South Plantation graduation. Then <laughs> went up to cocaine went all the way. Up to the <laughs> <Florida>. <laughs> like, it's a gambling. Like a, it's a high. It was yeah. literally there was a betting <laughs> yeah. board right. right as we're marching. Of course. Dun, 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 dun. Like oh, we could play the Quinella. <laughs> yeah. So. And then went up to New York, went to NYU drama school, okay. studied with some legendary acting coaches from the group theater. And then as soon as I got my SAG card, yeah. as I said, I came to California yeah. probably okay. in 87, 86. Who are some of the actors that you studied with at NYU that you see now still working? Or well, friends? Baldwin was, Alec Baldwin was wow. right below me. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. And, but it, she, I studied with Stella Adler. So we had like Candace like Bergen. actually Stella Adler. Yes. Not the, the conservatory. Yeah. The Not actual, actual person. The she actual was my individual. Teacher. That's she great. She was my teacher. Wow. And she studied with Stanislavski. Right. So it goes from Stanislavski, Adler, yeah. Fetterman. What? <laughs> Right? There it We're is. in the company of royalty. <laughs> oh, my uh, Lord. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. I don't, we go from the Moscow arts players right. Right, to Wayne Fetterman here. You know, I don't I was, want to say where we are. Yeah, here live for the people. <laughs> here live in <laughs> on the Los, top Los Angeles. In Ocean's 13, there's a great line where it says, if you shook Sinatra's hand, you got to have some, like, some kind of uh, respect. Uh-huh. She shook Hadler's, Stadler, uh, yeah. Stella Adler's hand. Who look shook Brando's hand if I remember correctly, no right? Yeah, she, she trained his... Brando as well. Yep, this is this is royalty. And that's what I'm saying. Now. We're in the presence. Oh my God, of royalty. Woo. That's why I say a million things. Look, I I don't want to bore it's us because eventually we're going to keep going through. <laughs> There's the number. <laughs> it's seven that we know of that were credited. There's got to be some no, uncredited. No, no, no. If you count the commercials, it is more than seven. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> In this town, that's a million. <laughs> that's true. That's very true. Yeah. So when you came out in '86, so you came out in '86. What yeah. was it? What was the atmosphere like versus what it's like now? Like, what was the vibe like? Was it way more open, or was it crazy? Well, it's kind of interesting. Magic. It's interesting. Now yeah, yeah. I feel like this is the best time in the world to be an actor in oh, LA. Yeah, great. In the history of the world, which is really yeah, a history. Yeah. A hundred. How, how long have we been doing feature films out here? 1915 is the first one. Right. So. Right. It's 105 years, mm-hmm. 103 years. Three years. Yeah, sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm bad at math, it's obviously. Right. Um, yeah, so this is the best time for an actor. Okay. There is so much content. Yeah. Yeah. There's 500 scripted shows. Yeah. There was nothing like that when I came. I mean, literally, and then cable kind of bubbled up a little right. bit, and now yeah. it's insane. So Yeah, that's what we were talking about off mic. I told Wayne, I said, when he came here, it was just right before it would start to blow up with, yeah. with HBO. I was going to, I think Dream On was one of their first ones that no came question. in 89. No, I remember I that. I can't imagine how depressing Hollywood must have been in like early 80s. It's certainly Can tough. I tell you something? Well, I don't know early 80s, but when I got out here, environmentally it was weird. Oh, yeah. What do you sure. with all the smog? Be- the smog? Yeah, yeah, because this was before they started oxygenating. Mm-hmm. I hope I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> um, <laughs> oxygenating the uh, the gasoline and all of that. Right. And you would pull up to the studio and they had different color warnings for the smog. Like, old oh. people don't go out today. Or this is medium. Like, like, a, like literally like DEFCON 3, 1 and 2. Right. 
Right. So that's wow. how bad. And I haven't seen those signs yeah. in mm-hmm. 30 years. Yeah. Yeah, I've never seen it. It's one of those stories I grew up with, like L.A. smog. And mm-hmm. I, I, I never experienced it <laughs> to the degree where it's that, where yeah. it's what I assume like Beijing or something like that uh, is. Right. Just so congested, so many cars, and just spitting out all those fumes. <laughs> They're unregulated. Yeah, no, it was, it was, it was interesting. But... You know the same. I remember. You know, at the t- every it's it's always tough to make it as sure, you know sure. in any kind of show business endeavor. Mm-hmm. But it was the same back then. And I would just you know drive to auditions. I mean, we didn't have you know there was no you wouldn't get <laughs> there's no email. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes you had to pick up the your sides. You know, those weren't delivered to you. And then oh. when fax machines, they finally faxed you aside, but it would be all curly because of the paper. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Is this interesting at all? Get that pager. Know. Beep, beep, beep. Got to go. Uh, and then, yeah. And so it just, oh. I just started, luckily, I started working mm-hmm. sort of a couple years in and they haven't had a, never had a real job out here in California. Wow. wow. Good for yeah, you. Never had one real job in California. That must have been incredible. such a pain having to drive out around this town, like just with the Kelly book or whatever it's called. Yeah. yeah. You know, the Thomas that, Guide. Yeah. Thomas Guide. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's just right. having to go to look at that and be like, oh my God, the tent is brutal today. What are my options? <laughs> As opposed to now I can just pull out my phone and I can be like, all right, I'm going to go one of three ways that I can yeah. meander between. And it just before it's like, you can. G17. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I need to go. <laughs> I got to remember seven names because I'm doing those quick turns to get through a certain area to get to a major street. Right. Like, <laughs> oh, I couldn't imagine just the amount no, of No, it wasn't. Believe me, we were. Maps weren't that complex <laughs> the way you're making them seem to be. Well, like everyone only, sort of figured them out pretty. There's only five easy. casting studios. I mean, where are you going? No, can. you pulled out a sextant and you checked <laughs> where the sun was on yeah, the horizon course, and said, "Of course, I must hear." Uh, and at I night can, we use the stars. It was good. Yeah, it was this just... time of the year, the moon is off the horizon during the day. Oh, let a Mulholland drive right through there. <laughs> yeah, done. <laughs> Perfect. There must have been tarot card readers every 20 feet. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were considering uh, what topics to to kick around with Wayne, and I think uh, I don't know if it was Matt came to him with the topic yep. or whatever, and then Wayne was like, yes, that, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so uh, when Matt told me, I was like, yeah, this is a this is a monster one to tackle. It's kind of a monolith. Yeah, it's big. For lack of it's a better big. term. because It's almost l- too big. Yeah. It's almost too big. It a, is. A lot of people think the 70s are the great, is the greatest decade for movies uh, and you can argue it is one of the greatest decades for movies and it was certainly when the studio system was changing and directors were the auteurs directors were the driving force yeah. in studios and so uh, there was so much incredible content that was created movie wise during the 70s that uh, to cut it down to just 10 is very difficult. Like I was making difficult. My, I'm looking at my list right now I have yeah. 10 and then I have another 20 that I could easily slot in there right yeah. But before we begin, can yes. I say that I feel like the most important event that happened that uh-huh. made 70s filmmaking possible yeah. happened in 1968 and often gets overlooked. Okay. okay. And that is the movie rating system. Came oh, into- yes. So okay. They didn't rate movies before then mm-hmm. or the Catholic League rated movie. There was no formal. Right. And so, uh, yeah, in 1968, best picture was Oliver. A right. G-rated movie. The next year, <laughs> 1969, the best picture was uh, the one in New York with the... the oh, yeah. The, uh, uh, Midnight, Midnight Cowboy. Cowboy. Midnight yeah. Cowboy. That's right. An X-rated movie. Mm-hmm. Went to G to X in one year. And just I'm saying that opened up the language and the subject matter that all got reflected yeah. in these 70s mm-hmm. movies that wouldn't be possible... In the 60s and f- the early 60s and certainly that's the 50s. That's true. I never thought about it like that. Yeah, that's the rating, why I'm here. That's yeah, the rating allows you to take chances. Be like, just just, just keep little kids away. Yeah. And this is an adult movie, and then now we can express adult ideas, and we don't have to make everything be a huge, uh, you know, a musical, a, yeah. a love story, a this that just broad spectrum for... Or even that the bad guy has to suffer consequences. Yep. Or yeah. any of these yep. studio code situations was. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, I just wanted to... St- just say that. And no. I don't know if I agree that 70 is the greatest decade, but it's certainly for a lot of writers. It, yeah. There was a lot of books written about it. Yeah. like, uh, and, But they cheat. I feel like those books cheat because they always put in late 60s movies. They always put in Easy Rider. They always yeah. put in Bonnie and Clyde. I'm like, those aren't 70s movies. Yeah, you're yeah. Right. That's 69 and 68. You're right. Yeah. Um, well, this was and this was from one of our uh, um, oh, our Patreon people. Yeah. Right. 
Top seventies. Uh, is it top seventies? Yeah. Do you have a guy's uh, or a lady's name or? or no, I'm trying to trans- find it now because I'm sorry we started. I can take a guess. I, I think I know whose it was. Go ahead. Go ahead. Which was Matthew Jasso's. Oh, was it Jasso? I okay. think it was one Thank of his you, first Matthew. ones. Yeah. Uh, but John's looking it up now. Oh. So if if I just got that wrong, I apologize. No, I think it is Jasso. I think you're absolutely right. And uh, we're going to go with that. And I don't want to hear anything else about it, Matthew. You got <laughs> oh, chosen. Oh. You got chosen. I didn't realize one of the other types you could play was old mother. That's beautiful. <laughs> So it's Latino, Italian, <laughs> Middle Eastern, and older middle-aged That's woman. That's right. I do. I play the older middle-aged woman. That's gorgeous. <laughs> anyway, yes, Matthew Jasso. There it is. Yes, yeah. top seven, top ten seventies films uh, was one because he said it's like ten topics. He like, you can choose amongst these. I love it. Let's get into it. Let's get in because there's a lot to talk about. All right, Matt, do you want to tell them how the show works? Yes. Once we set a topic, all three of us went our separate ways and created individual top ten lists. And we show back up here. I'll do my bottom five. John will do his bottom five. Wayne will do his bottom five. I'll do my next three. John will do his next three. Wayne does his next three. Then we trade one apiece. Once we have revealed our personal top ten list, we create the shows between the three of us. Kaboom! Uh, That was fast. All right. I've done it a lot. I understand. Uh, <laughs> and just to be clear, if you see a movie that's in my top five, yeah. I say... Punt. Punt. Right. Okay. We're just punting the discussion further on. Yeah. We'll save the praise for higher. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, uh, so who starts? Uh, I, I start. always forget. You. Okay, so me, you, me, you, and then... Okay, okay. Um, Let's do it, Matt. Impossible list. Punt. That movie is <laughs> on my top. That's number really? three. Impossible made, list. Impossible made, list is number three. Wait, yes. You shouldn't tell us it's three. Just tell us the point. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Told. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> That's great. This list is going to self destruct. Yes. Ew, is it possible <laughs> or is it impossible? Um, what right. we were talking about, I, I believe it was off air, was just the numerous things fighting for those last couple spots. Yes. Just wow. a, a million. It's brutal. A million choices. Yeah. Um, so I. I it, it, Anyway, I'm just going to get into it because I, I, I want to sit here and put yeah. up too many defenses. Sure, sure. So my number 10 is a clockwork orange. Anybody? Oh. Well, um, that's... Uh, it's not on my list. Not on my list. Okay. Okay. All right. That's a Stanley uh, Kubrick movie. That is a Kubrick. From 70, right? So you're saying the decade is 71 through 80? No, no. That's fine. Oh. No. 70 okay. is absolutely a yeah, 70s yeah. movie. I'll have technic- to stop right now. Yeah. It is not Matthew Jasso. It is Claiborne Williams. Claiborne Williams. Claiborne Williams. I and apologize. he sent us his top ten, and we will read his top ten at the end of the show. Uh, but let's keep forward. Right, Claiborne. Claiborne. Claiborne Williams. Claiborne yeah. this is Wayne Fetterman saying your name. Claiborne. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Clock of Orange. I, I, I am... I like Scoop, uh, Kubrick. Scoobrick. Yeah, Scoobrick. Uh, a lot. It's the Scooby-Doo version. It's yes. excellent. Um, really? So in A Clockwork Orange, like that was, I think, the second movie of his no. that I saw, maybe? Oh, that you saw? Yeah. Right. Okay. I mean, I grew up and a bunch of his was already out by the time I got to him, mm-hmm. uh, if not all of it, I think. I don't, yeah, I don't, I wasn't, I was too young to see Full Metal when it was out. Oh, okay. So I saw them all, like, maybe I'd seen something else before that time, but Full Metal came out in 80... 86, 87, something like something that. Something like that. Mm-hmm. 80s, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, I've always liked Kubrick to go back to, I've seen this one now, I think twice in the past three years since we wow. started this show, but I, I'd seen it numerous times before, and mm-hmm. it is one I keep revisiting. It's kind of drawn me in, and I like it. It's early him. I think it enables him to get to other movies that I adore of his mm-hmm. uh, after that. And I don't, I've just always had a thing for A Clockwork Orange. I just yeah. like the, the story that it's telling and this ultra violence and then counteraction like within the society. How do you correct these societal ills? Because we haven't been an interconnected people like this before on some level. Yeah. So crime, how do we deal with that? Or young teenage you know, punks. You know, they used to neuter people kind mm-hmm. of things. Mm-hmm. Take away their testosterone and maybe that'll settle them down. So this was a variation of that and psychological torture and what they put the characters through. I've just always mm-hmm. been kind of fascinated and drawn to the movie. And to me, it's a very 70s movie because, it, you know, it, those are when those types of films started to be made. I just yeah. never thought about the rating. Yeah, that's a great yeah, I point. believe it was rated X. Was it? I, yes. When it came out, I mm-hmm. believe it was rated X. Mm-hmm. And I think it's one of three X-rated movies nominated for Best Picture. Yeah. Oh, that, Cowboy, what's the third? I think it's the the one with Marlon Brando. Wait, last oh, Tango in Paris. Yes. 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 That was an X-rated movie. That's right. Okay. Just off the top of my head. That's the kind of knowledge you're going to get. <laughs> I'm not Wayne. even touching a computer, From right? Wayne this is Zetterman. in my brain. Off the top. That's, right. that's, that's in my right. brain. Yeah. Uh, this is the film that's difficult for me to watch over and over again. I think that's why it didn't make the cut for me because okay. it is a powerful film and it is a good film. And 
But like what he goes through, Roddy McDowell goes through his characters. It's not Roddy McDowell. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Malcolm. Uh, Malcolm <laughs> yeah, McDowell. Yeah. What he goes through is really unsettling. You got me talking Planet of the Apes. The other, yeah, you know, it's a different movie at that point. But, but Malcolm McDowell, what he goes through is really <laughs> tough, and the screams and the visual images that he experiences, and then the rapes that happen, and then all that happens with that. It's just a really difficult film to get through and unsettling. And I don't always work up the courage to watch those kinds of films over and over again. But I still respect I the just, artistry of it. Yeah, I love it when he's. He's whistling, and the old man realizes oh, who it is. Oh man! Every yeah. time I see that scene, I'm like, "Oh, this yeah. is." Yeah. To me, the, the 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 scene that sticks out for me, and yeah. I think for most, maybe not for most. I don't want to be presumptuous, but the yeah, yeah, the, the eyes, the, the eye when they're yeah. putting that. I just can't believe what I've I'm had, seeing. I've had those things on my. Oh, you have? Before. Yeah, I had oh. LASIK and like. Oh, I thought you were a serial rapist <laughs> and you had to be reprogrammed. <laughs> That's, a, that's something I can't talk about anywhere. My brain scrambles out whenever that topic comes up, I, as if it's been erased or something. Oh, boy. Yeah, when I had LASIK back in the day, that's how they held my eyes open. They right. put those things on. I was like, oh, this isn't a good sign. Can but, we just sidebar a little about sure. the LASIK? Because yeah. I'm super afraid of LASIK. Mm-hmm. And you have had great experience. Scale of zero to ten, ten being as good as you could expect. Uh, I think it was a nine and a half to a ten. Wow. Wow. And it's only now, like, I, I might need to get a touch-up because they're no longer 2020, yeah. but it's oh. it's like 2040 or something. It's not bad, but I used to have, like, 2010 in one eye and 2015 in the other, and that was like that for a decade, 15 You're years. kidding. Yeah, just starting to fade the past, like, two, three. I have a friend who just did it three, maybe a month ago, and she still can't get rid of these, like, blood corpsal corpsicles things around her oh, wow. oh, eye. So she can't what I worry about. Yeah, she seems to can't get rid of it. And she's looked at so I don't know what price she paid. Maybe when she went to a lower end person or lower end because it's not always they're not always the highest end if you don't if you oh, choose yeah. it correctly, right? Anything could happen. There are billboards that's basically just like buy one eye, get the yeah. other eye free. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's not the one you've got to. <laughs> yeah, it's well I mean it's close to that. It's just like it's only your vision. It. Yeah, yeah, right. You wouldn't right. want to save the three hundred bucks. No, I mean but my dad was a doctor and he was like if you're gonna do it, do it with this guy. Oh, and yeah. me and my sister, my mom, all had it so done at the did? same time. Okay. And they're all happy with it. Yep. All right. Wow. Where is this guy at? Mid-state Illinois. Oh, okay. So you can't. Well, you know what, what's maybe Wayne could fly. There. Pardon me. He's in North Plantation. <laughs> oh. You know what I mean? He's hello. competing. <laughs> uh, all right, all right, yeah, that's your, where he's. All right. So that's my number, number nine, nine? <laughs> is uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Oh, yeah, yeah, on I'm, my side list? No, not a punt. Yes. On my uh, yeah, honorable, honorable mentions. Honorable mention. Yes, mm-hmm. of course. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent movie, top to bottom. Uh, That's a Milos Forman movie. Mm-hmm. One Best Picture in 1975, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah. Incredible yeah. cast. And it was basically like Nicholson, Nicholson kind of cementing that he is yeah. now something within culture. Mm-hmm. Just like, boom, this is my first. I carried the lead in this. And it's a, I mean, it's an interesting and charming and funny movie, but it's also, you know, kind of depressing. You and like disturbing movies. Yeah. You like disturbing so, To me, the 70s is kind of that. Mm. It's where we went into a dystopian, but we explored darker ideas no as question. a culture. Sure. And I say we because I was born in 1978. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm saying you like people. claim. You like yeah. claim. Uh, you but uh, so I, I, it's what, if I think 70s, I kind of think of that in a lot of ways. Where An amazing cast, too. Yeah. So many people that went on to. Top yeah. to bottom. But for Lloyd, Danny DeVito. And she won an Oscar, right? Yes. And, uh, for Nurse Ratched. Yeah. Was it Louise Fletcher? Yes. Or was it Ellen Burr? Yeah, Louise it, Fletcher. It was Louise yeah. Fletcher. Okay. That's right. Yeah. So many incredible... That's Vincent, an amazing... Like, I mean, it's hard to... It's on my honorable mention. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. it is... How could it not be? But it's also, uh, it's also once again, this is another film you pick that's about society, right? Yeah, what's with you and doctors m- and nurses <laughs> and <laughs> holding people down and Listen, electrocuting them? Yeah. Listen, it's coincidental at it best. It is really it's coincidental at best. This is also about crime. Hey, hey, I'm just saying, you need some hard proof to get a warrant on me at this point. <laughs> Let me tell you my favorite moment of that movie. Uh-huh. That movie, and I've seen it a number of times. Mm-hmm. I love the choice. Love it. Is when he realizes that... Most of those guys are there voluntarily. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Even just saying it gives me chills. Yeah. He's just like McMurtry's like, what is going on? Yeah. Right. Why would you? Why choose? would you? And like, that's the statement, right? Because yes. most of us take part in this lunacy of society in America willingly. We 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 commit ourselves to this structure and all this stuff that happens, and we see the lunacy of it. Yet it feels so comfortable to us that we don't want to it's break normal. the pattern. It's what we're used to. Yeah, it's normal. And that's the thing. I mean, this film is so layers deep about it's what amazing. it's saying. That's why. And Michael Douglas, how we yeah. got the rights to it. That's the yeah. Thing. It's he incredible. got a produce. Didn't he? He produced. Get, yeah, he produced. Is it, it so a he's Kenyan up there. 
Ken Kesey. Yeah, Ken Kesey book. Yeah, Ken Kesey book. Yes. Yeah, Ken Kesey book. Yes. Okay. All right. he, and he was gonna um, he was gonna be the star. Uh, but then he stepped aside to let Nicholson start so he could focus on producing the uh, film. Uh, Michael Douglas. Incredible. Yeah. Smart move. Yep, absolutely. Nice, nice pick. Nice pick. Yeah. I just I like the end, especially for the character where they end up with him and just he gets he gets what would have been his joy in life taken away from him. So the character needs to die. You're doing the humane thing for him at that point because right. he's just been reduced to everything he didn't want to be. Right. I've never seen the ending, but that's cool that you ruined that. Um, <laughs> but you remember other specific moments, so you just got to it every time. Just walked just out of the theater. Yeah, just, just I can't take it. I can't take it. I'm out. <laughs> Fetterman has left the building. Right. As soon as what happens, Acting royalty Brad, is leaving. As soon as it happens to Brad Dorff, he's like, I'm out. I can't yeah, take it no right. more. Uh, all right. So, Danny DeVito. I can't take it. <laughs> What's your number Christopher eight? Christopher Lloyd. Uh, my number eight is Alien. Ah. Uh, 1979. That is a massive punt, my friend. It's a massive punt. Yes. That's a punt. I yeah. love it. There you go. See, there's your first punt. So we got to hold, and he gets to judge me now, later on. Let if me ask you a question. If yes. Alien is not even on my... We think lesser of you for it. We're going to yeah. talk you about can, Alien later. Yeah, you can yeah. get, keep you, going. Keep you, I got you, it. I totally got it. You can get the hell out of my apartment right now. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, wait till you hear. Yeah, wait till I mean, you First of all, I was there. I have the button I got from Alien. <laughs> what? Yeah. I mean, we'll talk about it. All I right, have great. the button, and you'll be able to guess what's written on the button. That's phenomenal. All Go right. Ahead. So uh, then what's your number six? No, that's no, my number six. Six. That was my eight. That was my seven. Chinatown. You had another crime film. Not on my list. Not on my list. Robert Town. Maybe no. I'm just a sucker for Nicholson in no. the 70s. This are. is 1974, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Sure. One of the greatest scores ever, The Last Second, written by Jerry Goldsmith oh, wow. using just five instruments. Oh, wow. Yeah, and uh, yeah, because they weren't happy with that score mm -hmm. at all. And obviously, I this is the problem I have with Chinatown. Okay, why what? it's not on my list. Because of the ambiguity? or the, the... A little bit of the ambiguity. <laughs> yeah. But the main thing is, not really about Chinatown. Well, you're kind of splitting hairs here. Yeah. No, I'm not. It's not about I think 2001 is not set in 2001, is it? I don't think it's yeah. set. No. Is yes. it? Is it? The beginning of it is. Yeah. It's a few. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, I think Chinatown is more so just a metaphor for. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> you like, understand that. So it's just like, okay, well, uh, I get but it. the whole movie, I'm like, what's going to happen in Chinatown? I'm like, it's Chinatown, Jake. Get out of here. I'm yeah. like, what is it? What? <laughs> yeah, okay. Most of the well, time he's up on true. Mulholland and he's the thing. He's in a library. Nowhere near Chinatown. <laughs> well, for the whole movie, yes. Until the very end. Yeah, when the he actually very end. They plop it on. He goes to Chinatown. <laughs> and just where, but that scene could have happened anywhere, that yeah. con confrontation between uh, Houston I, uh, and yeah. Faye Dunaway. That could have been anywhere. Well, it would have to happen at the butler's house in Chinatown. <laughs> Uh, that's to say I just saw it. I just saw a pristine <laughs> di digital print of oh. it at the TCM festival. I'm very oh, yeah? familiar nice. with it. Um, that's my problem with the movie. Okay, okay. and, and it, it, I mean it's that's an interesting problem to have with the movie. But yeah, I, know, I respect and, it. By the way, there is a known... considered one of the best scripts in the history yes. of Hollywood. Right? There's no. Yeah, I mean. Uh... I knew about as much as the, about that as I did when I the movie itself when I saw the movie. Mm. Just like, about oh, this script. thing was huge. Yeah, about the script, about kind of the bigger aspects about it and everything coming together mm -hmm. for this one just tremendous thing. That was before I ever saw it, so I experienced it, you know, years later. Yeah. I know. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously I'm an outlier on this. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't have the problem going into it, going, where the fuck is Chinatown? <laughs> I didn't have that problem. I already the fuck mythos you, of you, the, the film preceded itself, you know. <laughs> so I, I get it. I just I was like, as soon as you said that, I was like, yeah, I can see if it came out at that time, I could see myself having that complaint. It's like, yeah, you know, you could have put it anywhere yeah. and come up with a name. Maybe but just so, a, yeah, it could incredible. have been Boyle Heights. Oh, uh, it doesn't have the, it the same ring to it. I know yeah. Boyle Heights. I'm just making... Echo Park, possibly. It could have been... Echo Park's not a best. Silver Lake, Little maybe. Could have been. How about? Uh, yeah. How about? <laughs> what do you got? Koreatown doesn't even work. Yeah, I didn't want to the same. <laughs> what about? I, I would love it. Jake, it's Bra it's a Brayatar person. <laughs> You're Bray like, what? Forget it, Jake. Everything's I'm sticky, metaphorically. I got it. Hancock Park adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Take that, Robert Town. Yeah. Clearwater Village. <laughs> Mid Wilshire. It's, forget it. It's Mid Wilshire. <laughs> Okay. No, this is uh, this is fantastic work by Nicholson in this movie as well. That's the thing about Nicholson through the seventies is really s okay, maybe can the we, greatest. Can we just take work. a time out right now? Okay, because if I'm not mistaken, this came out the year before One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, mm -hmm. and your whole point. Oh, okay, was, yeah, you're right. Well, maybe I just experienced it and assumed. Yeah. 
Okay. So what are you saying? You're <laughs> that wrong? I, 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 that I love Nicholson? <laughs> yeah, so do I. So, uh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> but I don't know. Was he, he, but he was the star of China. Well, of right? course. He was yeah. ab- ab- above both those names, right? Above Faye and above... Yeah, uh, yeah. He was uh, definitely above number Houston. one on the call sheet. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, oh, yeah. Anyway, this like, was his time. It was. Uh, right? Yeah. Just, it's weird to think of him like he went through... You know, what was he, 30 before he got mm-hmm. Easy Rider or oh, in his early 30s? Right yeah, he was 69. like, he bummed around town. Oh, okay. He did uh, that Monkeys movie, didn't he? Yes. Yeah, and head, that came out I before, but it, that might have. What's that? I believe it's called Head. Head. Okay, I was thinking of Brain Candy. The Monkeys, was, that's right, that yeah. movie. Yeah. They put out a. Oh, that was such a weird movie. But he also did the original Little Shop of Horrors that George uh, Romero directed. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, he Are did you the sure before. Oh wait, who who was that that did that? But it was before. I don't think it was. For okay. some reason, in my head, I think I would have remembered the George Romero. I, I know which one you're talking about. The little George well, Romero. His first one was Night of the Living Dead, wasn't it? Yeah, I, right. I think which it was is black that. and white, isn't it? Yeah, no, it is. But it's like there'd be a weird transition. I've never seen the original. I little think Shop. it's somebody else, but I might be wrong. It's some, oh, it's Roger Corman. I'm Corman. sorry, Corman. Wasn't it Corman? Yeah, I know it was a Corman production, but Corman also directed it. Well, let's take a uh, look. Yeah, yeah. He's looking it up, guys. Probably not. Jeez. This is I, I didn't I've know Wayne, I didn't know Wayne was going to be this in a story. Yeah, I'm, I, oh, I'm really into this kind of stuff. It is Roger Corman and yeah. two other directors. Who? Mel Wells. I don't know. All right. Yeah. And Charles B. Griffith. Yeah. There we go. Guess what both those guys are. What's that? Not George. Romero. Yeah. Oh, I see. So you were just trying to go around about yeah, a way you, to you smack turned into me fact in the... checker okay. in the past five Sorry, minutes. Sorry, it's All in right. literally. Right. Yeah, no, I like it, but I, 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 I listen. I, I'm don't... in it. Keep going. We have a long list to go. We Let's do. Keep. All right. We do. All right. So my number six then is uh, All the President's Men. That Ooh. is a. That's my first punt. Punt. As a punt. punt. All as right. A punt. Okay. As a punt. That's great. All right. There's my list. Not on my list. Uh, okay, yeah. so not at all on your list. No, no. Um, He's I fine a, with government corruption. Go yeah, ahead. I am. I'm a big fan of it. All right. So my number ten is something we talked about off camera, directed by Mr. Franklin J. Schaffner. Yeah. Uh, I used to be in the military, so I have a proclivity for military films, and this one fought its way as it should onto my top ten list at number ten. Patton, yeah. the George C. Scott yes. masterpiece. Uh, which the, I own on Blu-ray, and I watch that monologue maybe once every two or three weeks. I will pop it on and just watch that opening monologue in front of that huge-ass American flag. Motivation for the I, day. It really is. Like, go get it, Tiger. You salute the TV, and then you walk out and I, go to work. I really do. I turn it off, and I go, mm-hmm. all right, I'm ready for the day, because I'm going to make the other guy die for his country, not me. Um, just so much about this film uh, is incredible, because it's not... You would think it's a standard biopic about this incredibly, uh, incredibly powerful... Mm-hmm. And divisive military general, mm-hmm. uh, and initially you're caught up that it's a biopic, and you're gonna like it's gonna be like rah rah America rah rah. But in fact, it's really subversive about war, about being a soldier yeah. in war, and about what it's like dealing with the higher ups in the military as you're trying to do what you're doing, what your hubris hubris can cost you, and also in the end, uh, what it says about. The idea of war. His his monologues to himself mm-hmm. are almost more powerful than the monologues he has to his soldiers or to the people around him. And Carl Malden is incredible uh, um, as Omar Bradley uh, throughout the whole movie and just everything that happens within the film. And it's a three hour film. It's very difficult to do in nineteen uh, whatever it 70. is seventy seventy. Yeah, it's yeah. very difficult. The one film best picture of nineteen seventy. Yes, it did. So I mean, just incredible for a three hour film mm-hmm. about this guy. And Jersey Scott is so magnetic throughout the whole movie. You know. Incredible. Yeah. So many things to talk about. Yeah. One, you know who wrote that movie. No, tell me. Are you familiar with the movie The Godfather? Yes. Do you know who directed The Godfather? Uh, Francis Ford Coppola. Yeah, that's who wrote it. Wow. He wrote Pat. That's how, yeah, that's his, that was his in. Incredible. He wrote it, and the script, like, he wrote a draft. They hated it. Mm-hmm. The studio hated it, but uh, George C. Scott loved it, and they mm-hmm. ended up using that. That became him. It's... Got his foot in the door, and next thing you know, he's he's doing the Godfather. Like one yeah. of the doing That's the incredible. Godfather. So it's wow. amazing. Here's my favorite moments mm-hmm. in Patton. Okay, is, is I I'm not going to quote it exactly, but it's like, Rommel, you magnificent bastard! <laughs> <laughs> I read your book. <laughs> <laughs> like when he's uh, fighting the tank yes. general yeah. of the Germans. I read yeah. your book. And then oh. also, isn't there a scene? It's like he quotes some poetry, and they says yes. like, what does he say? He goes, who wrote that? Yeah. He goes, I did. Is that it? <laughs> yeah, I did? Yeah. 
Because everyone's so used to him dropping these incredible uh, quotes from other people yeah, yeah. that nobody assumes that he would uh, uh, quote himself. That's incredible. But that's, that's Patton. Yeah, exactly. No, ultimately, no one's greater than Patton. Yes. In Patton's yeah. mind, he can, he can lead the world. He'll be the first one to tell you. Yeah. yeah. I, I See, I like it because it's like the first war movie, or one of the first, that tried to show that these were flawed individuals mm-hmm. as opposed to showing the altruistic. Usually that's what you get in the military. Mm-hmm. It's, we're all fighting for a good side, and there's clearly bad guys on there, and just when he you know, uh, berates and belittles the soldier, yeah. you see a side of the military, and you're like, wow, I'd never, I guess I never thought about that. That would have been you know, cool. At certain point, and up until more than likely recently, but uh, yeah, it's a good movie. And you see, uh, with George C. Scott, he, he has an a- affection for these kind of uh, uh, films that question the military. Yeah, uh, you see that in uh, uh, Doctor Strange Love, right? This idea he's playing oh, right. this he's playing this character that's also comical in his uh, administration and his belief of America first and all, but you're seeing this the real ridiculous nature of being this way. He's playing yeah. this character this way. And a truer per- picture of it. Yes, exactly. That's fantastic. So that's why I put it in my number 10. So yeah, there- no, that's an amazing, amazing movie. Good choice. Good Thank choice. You. I'm endorsing it even though it's not a punt. This we is got, a fun podcast. We got next. Hell yeah. He has to stamp everything. It would be great. All right, my number nine is uh, Taxi Driver. Yeah, that was one of the. I did make my. It was so close. Oof. Not on your list either. Not no. It's definitely oh, on my. Wow. Uh, yeah, you know uh, that was with yeah, honorable Clark mentions. Clark. Yeah. No question. No question. Right, right there. This made a late push for me to get in because it's a film that I don't necessarily gravitate to in the yeah. vein of uh, uh, Clockwork Orange or uh, One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest, but. I recently watched it for the Cinephiles, the other podcast that I host uh, oh. with my friend Steve, and we were breaking it down and analyzing it, and I was resisting watching it before we, we did the podcast, and mm-hmm. then I watched it, and I was like, this is actually f- a fantastic film. It and, is. And really great exploration of the devolution of a person and uh, the PTSD that's involved with war, uh, the idea of judging everything around you because you don't fit in. Mm -hmm. Everything is wrong, not you. And what that does to you and how deep you can go into it, how you create these ideas of, oh, this woman, she wears white, she's so angelic, she must be pure, let me create all these expectations and then chastise her for not living up to my expectations. Chastise society and then create this idea. Yeah, hypocritical. And you you create this idea, and it's very relevant now when you see the internet community and the people who are trolls and the people who are commenting. Like You see some of them mm-hmm. have the same kind of vitriol that you see Travis, uh, Bickle. Travis Bickle have yeah. in Taxi Driver. Paul Schrader, fantastic script. Mm-hmm. Scorsese, incredible direction. Great acting. from I Great think- little turn by Albert Brooks. Yeah, yes. Yes. Albert Brooks. Yeah. Yeah. Harvey cattell has got a small part. Sybil Shepard yes. is the... Yeah, Sybil, Sybil Shepard. Yep. Jodie Foster. Oh, when he takes her to a pornographic yes. movie and has no idea... See, that's where right. the version of morality mm-hmm. comes into play because he does hold her up to be this angelic symbol. Right. right. The first thing you do is take, oh, yeah, you know. Because he know. wants to corrupt it. He yeah. wants no, to corrupt No, I thought it, it was the, you thought that, that's what it was? That, he wanted that, to corrupt yeah, her? When I watched it, like, yes, like, but he, I think he wanted, I don't know. I thought question. it was the opposite. I thought he was just so unfamiliar with dating someone. No. And he would, just, don't forget, here's my point. Okay. Here's my point. And I know you just broke it down on another podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, that was an eye roll, by but... the way. <laughs> People can't see that at home. Don't worry. That's fully allowed on this show. Sometimes you're like, okay. <laughs> um, that, that he driving around. Yeah. Don't forget, this was the era of Deep Throat and mm-hmm. the Devil and Mr. Jones. And suddenly it became okay for the first time in history. Right. To for adults to go, couples to go to see a pornographic movie. Mm-hmm. Never before it happened. Yeah. And especially in New York was the key of so he would see like it was almost like a sophisticated thing that people would do. Like mm-hmm. from the Upper East Side, mm-hmm. go to these sleazy movies. And so I think he would see rich people doing it, and that's why he took her. Am I wrong about that? I think you're wrong, Wayne. I don't okay. want to say you're wrong. And I'm it's wrong your, a lot. I'm wrong your, a lot. No, 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 no. It's your, it's your perspective, and I respect that. The films are subjective, so you can have your own ideas. But, but he's been watching porn movies through the whole movie up until this point. Oh, he was? Yeah. After, when he gets off the work, he goes right in, tries to pick up the point, tries to pick up Diane Carroll in one of the, in one of the uh, sequences. She's, okay. she's a yeah. ticket taker. At the point, so for her, for him, this is what he knows. But I also know that he, the way he speaks to her, the way he breaks her down in the coffee shop, he's 
got this idea about her. So why would he mess it up? He messes it up because he cannot stop himself from corrupting anything good in his life because it's just how he functions. And eventually, when it all happens, it all breaks down. You have that happy ending near the end, uh, at the end of the yeah. movie, which is a little feels a little tacked on. It still doesn't take away the fact that he went through what he went through, but he still has that in him, that yeah. desire to go dark. And you see that one flash before the film ends in red in the rearview mirror, yeah. and you know he's still Travis Bickle inside, which I love. Uh, all right, so then my number and eight. And can I, I, oh, real yeah. quickly, yeah, I just sure. want to just, for those who haven't seen the movie, there's a shot like from the ceiling mm-hmm. in that oh, yes. bloodbath yeah. scene that's just, and yeah. obviously the, sh- the shot of, of the tire of the cab driving with the smoke of the city is yes. just so iconic. And there's three of those God's Eye View shots there in, is. throughout the movie, yes. Okay. And the bloodbath one is the one that really hits you. Uh, I, you call end. it God's Eye? Yeah. Okay, like okay. Above, yeah. Yeah. A, yeah, I didn't know that the, that was a thing to do for, I could see that word, like richer couples, as you said before. Mm. I've been thinking about that the whole time. Like, I never... I've never heard that, and it makes sense that it would be kind of a niche yeah. thing when it first came out. Yeah. Uh, incredible, incredible. Because yeah. he does. He takes her to a Swedish porn movie. It isn't a regular American porn. Oh, it's a Swedish, he is. Which is, a, which is kind of one of these well, mondo films. Well, it's because films. the Swedes have been doing porn for a while, yeah. and when it became legal here, we didn't have the production facilities. Like It wasn't going on as much, so we right. just imported theirs. <laughs> this is a good porn <laughs> podcast. There we go. It's a lot of history, things. History of porn. Well, we'll just record this in the valley. All right, so then my number eight is uh, Superman. Oh, not even on my. Yeah. Wow. Not even wow. on my. Not. Yeah. I'm not a fan. You know uh, that already. Oh, that's right. You don't. That's, that's 1978, right. right? 1978. Oh, right. That's. This, uh, let me hear the case. Yeah. Let me hear this, the case. Uh, the whole reason we have the superhero movie genre. Oh, okay. Now okay. If you call. It's because of Superman, because of what Richard Donner did in 1978. Wait, wasn't Take there two second? directors on that movie? Well, no, the second one had two directors, yeah. not the first one. The first one is Donner. The second one is, uh, what's his face, who did Hard Day's Night? I forget. Oh, Richard Lester? Yes, Richard Lester comes in and kind of does, because oh, Donner okay, okay. was unhappy with what, because he shot most of Superman 2 at the I, while same While they were time, doing, yeah, the he was first doing one. Superman. All right. Yeah. You seem like you know more of them. For some reason, I thought there was. Somebody got fired off the beginning. I of, seem like uh, no. It seems like uh, you totally know what I the, do know. Yeah, yeah, you do know. Uh, you're thank you. Okay, I apologize. I apologize. Yeah, I apologize. Thank you. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> go ahead. it wasn't so that anywhere. much of an attack. I <laughs> sell, <laughs> sell. Yeah, go ahead and sell it. <laughs> uh, anyway, no. I, I mean, Christopher Reeve out of nowhere. Margot Kidder out of nowhere. But you have the great Gene Hackman coming in as Lex yeah. Luthor. Yeah. You have the great Ned Beatty again yeah. coming in as uh, whatever his name is, and and all that that comes through. And the great Valerie Perrine is in there as well. So, but the film itself is this idea of America again. It was we're coming out of Vietnam. We need something to believe in the country again. Superman shows up. Superman carrying the American flag. Superman representing what we could be again as a country, as a society, putting putting us back together mm-hmm. again. And we and I think this is one of the biggest films to come out during this time, like I said, because it sparks the genre of superhero movies. But it's also a film that makes us remember how magical and beautiful films can be. And the reason why we it has endured as a medium, when you're sitting inside that theater and you are taken away and you're captivated. Transported. Yeah, transported. Transported. transported you're yeah. flying. So, <laughs> so you're literally say, flying. You're flying. And then you have Brando in this thing right at the beginning who got paid like $3 million for two and a half minutes of screen time. Uh, all this stuff. Also, that goes he didn't learn the script. Did not learn the script. Of course, yeah. that's no. Brando's style. That's right. Taught from Stella Adler. All goes back to Wayne. Fetterman. Oh, really? Fair. Yeah. Oh. No, I'm kidding. Um, but I'm <laughs> you, just saying that was. You just... should show up to set and be like, I have no idea what's going on. This is another reason it's not even on my bubble list. I don't understand. Yeah. Is because the ending. I, yeah. If I'm not mistaken. Doesn't yeah. he spin around the world so fast yes, that he, he does. stops time? I brought it up before. It's it's infuriating. Yeah. Thank you. It's infuriating. He doesn't stop. Uh, well, he stops. He reverses time. He reverses well, first time. First, he has to, to stop s- it. Right, he does. Yeah. Right. To save Lois. But just the... The fact that everyone would fly off the earth at that point. <laughs> that doesn't bother Superman. Yeah, somehow just hitting it's the a- rewind button actually worked. So with just- anything... Why did you even go back further than that? Why don't you go back and save your parents? So what you're saying... <laughs> Like, what is, time means nothing to this guy. Yeah. <laughs> He's not reversing the galaxy. He's not reversing the planet. <laughs> I mean, okay. it's, it's, yeah, it's as ridiculous as is. You take it to the nth degree and it's, it's, it puts ridiculous I mean, on like, its head. Time means nothing to this dude. All right. But well, that's a romantic motion that you would uh, you you do this kind of thing. You would sacrifice everything possible for the woman you love. That's what he does at the end. So he's human. 
He's human. Yeah, he that's what you would do. Wait, what does he sacrifice? Uh, the the going violating his father's code. Remember, Brando appears and he says to him, "Don't do this. You're not supposed to be doing oh, this." Oh, I didn't remember that. I told you not to do this, and he's flipping it around and around because he wants to save her so badly. And so, wait a minute. Okay, you're saying he. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying that is a big emotional moment that Absolutely. he goes against his dead father's yeah. wishes. Uh, you've never gone against. You never like broke like away every from teenager yes! does that. Yeah, that's what makes him relatable and understandable okay, and human. Right. We're doing it. This is fun. He's not yeah. Kryptonian. He's <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, look, I'm with you. I, I never enjoyed this. I don't like the Supermans. I find the movie version a very fatally flawed character. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, not a fan. I, you know what I do like about that movie is the score. Yeah, the score is great. The score John is, Williams, of yeah, course. the score. and the credits. Yes, 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 the credits yes, are amazing. Yes, credits just, it, are... That gets you up. The first when those yeah. horns come in, bam, yeah. Ba, da, ba, hell yeah, let's fly. Let's yeah. do. I want to love the movie. Trust me, there are moments of it, but it's just like it's so infuriating. Plus, I hate. And Superman. that's the year you were born, right? Seventy eight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I also think it's great because it has like uh, who's a, a Glenn Ford. You have decades of film. Actors in this film so that harken back in it, to the <laughs> that harkens back to the history of film, <laughs> and so there's so much about it that just uh, I absolutely love. So there you go. Yep. All right. So then my number seven is another heroic film, uh, Rocky. Are you again? It is right on my I, bubble. It is the top of my bubble. Wow. It is the top of my bubble. I didn't, love Rocky, but I, didn't you, make my bubble. Oh wow! I don't like Rocky. What? Oh my God. Rocky IV is the only Rocky I like. Wow. Rocky IV oh, is the only Rocky. Everything you're saying is borderline. <laughs> borderline what? What are you going to do? I'm what just saying no. Do? I meant borderline personality disorder. <laughs> <laughs> borderline. You're borderline. <laughs> like, I took it as a threat against me. It's a threat that I'm creating within myself. Wait a minute. Four. Wait, is that who's in that? Is that that's, 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 that's where we defeated communism. That's right. The oh, Russian. Okay, okay. Okay. That was where we At saw point, the beauty of Reaganomics. Taking over this entire oh, world. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, Do- Rolf, Dolph, Dolph Lundgren. Dolph Lundgren. I couldn't even say yeah. that name. Yeah. 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 Okay. In no they... way is Stallone on HGH and he's, you know, oh, shoulder pressing really that wagon or whatever it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. It's like, okay. I feel like there's nothing, nothing close to Rocky. Yeah. Well, anyway, go for it. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Great film. John Avildsen directed his yep. thing. Uh, you have Sylvester Stallone. Once again, here's a guy, the legend of this yes. film. Mm-hmm. You know, he wrote the script. Wouldn't, parallels the movie. Yes, parallels yep. the movie very much. So wouldn't get it. Wouldn't let it be done unless he was the star. Was willing to take less money. Fought and fought and fought. Wouldn't sell the script. I didn't have a dime. Hardly any money to his name. Had been in something called Cherry Two Thousand. Had been in a, in a like a, a, a Lords porn, of Flatbush. Lords of Flatbush. A light porn movie as yes. well. Yeah, the Italian so, style. He's also as, his thing. he also is in the Woody Allen movie Take the Money and Run. Oh, right. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah, so you, you go, walk into the situation. It's based on Chuck Wepner fighting Ali yeah. Yeah. Uh, during that time, which uh, Lee F. Schreiber just did a nice little film about that mm-hmm. last year called Chuck, which I actually watched a week ago and really enjoyed. And so it, it's all this whole story of, once again, here's America, Americana. He represents the underdog, mm-hmm. fighting against what is, you know, Apollo Creed, what is Ali, which is, the, you know, the confident swagger of this whole idea. Can you do it? You know, there's... It was all everything was happening with the gas crisis, everything that was going on in America with the economy. Like people felt down and out, people felt like they needed something. And the, here comes Rocky Balboa to show them what they can be, to show them that just because you're an underdog doesn't mean you can't succeed, doesn't mean you can't be uh, a, a champion if given a shot. Mm-hmm. And all through his journey, he at no point is he like. Is there cliches here? Because he constantly questions himself. He's not sure. He's, he's you know trying to date Talia Shire, this mousy young woman. He has to deal with Burt Young, who's against him the whole time. Mm-hmm. All of this is happening, and everything. And even when he has, <clears throat> even when he realizes like that he's being made fun of, he's a joke. Uh, when he goes to the night before to look at the ring and they've got the shorts wrong, the promoter says to him, "Well, it doesn't gotta matter anyway. It's just about the show." That's in that moment he realizes all the work I've done might not even matter. Yeah. So now I just want to survive. I don't even care about winning. And this is incredible for a sports movie that he doesn't win at that the end. That is a very yeah. 70s. That is a very right? 70s thing. I'll yes. go talk about it with other movies as well. But yeah. that is unlike Rocky 2, 3, 4, and whatever yeah. ones. Yeah. He always wins. Like to have a sports movie where the guy comes up short, yeah. but in a way wins a bigger prize because yeah. he made the, he went the distance exactly. And that that score, yeah. I think it's Bill Conti, Bill Conti wrote that score. And those, I mean that 
those rounds are amazing. Yeah. The 14th. Oh, my God. It's just. Uh, it's very emotional. It's so brutal and great. I, I love that movie. Love it. I think if Best we picture in 1976. Right. If we don't have Rocky, if we don't have Arnold Schwarzenegger, I guarantee we don't have a fitness craze in this country with men. Uh, Jane Fonda took care of the women in the 80s. Men would not be working out if it, it wasn't for I think for somebody Rocky, else would have filled the void. If it wasn't for Schwarzenegger. Well, they filled the void. Yeah, maybe yeah, somebody yeah. else would have. Maybe but they're the reason. Maybe it would have taken longer, but it was kind of... If, if, yeah. Basically, once Fonda has the success, hey, hey, why don't we come up with a men's version of this? In our timeline, it's Rocky. Everybody yeah, no. has Rocky workout sure. music. Everybody. I mean, the, I mean, and it also created the workout montage, yes. yep. which I don't think that was quite done on that level. And nope. Tracking shot with him running and yeah. yeah, I just saw a documentary about John Avildsen. Oh wow, yeah, who recently died because yes. he also did Karate Kid, yep. mm-hmm. which is an eighties movie. And uh, and I think Bad News Bears is correlative as well. They also don't win at the end. Yeah, in so the seventies yeah. was all about. You were right about that win. Yeah. Uh, all right. So then my number six. <laughs> Here we see go. This reaction. Uh, Star Wars: A New Hope. Okay. That's called a punt. First of all, that is not a punt for me, but I love it. That is called a punt. Okay. I love it. Can't wait to talk about it. Okay. Perfect. Can't awesome. wait to talk right. about it. Let's Speaking get to your list. Let's then. start it with your list, Wayne. Okay. Number 10, I'm <laughs> cheating. Uh, wait, what? That's fine. What do you I'm got? I'm going to cheat. I'm going to cheat right off the bat. Okay. Why not? It's your 10. It's my 10. It is a tie between two movies. This Very, is a cop-out I, situation. A totally cop-out, total cop-out. No way. We've, we've never done that, either of us individually. <laughs> I know. So I, I go right out of the never. gate. I go right out of the gate. Right out of the gate. This I'm a rule breaker. I'm a rule breaker. Last... I'm like Nicholson in... Uh... Trust me. That's yeah. that's what I think about you. <laughs> okay. Wayne Fetterman, Wait, the rule breaker. When you hear them, I think you're going to be like, all right, I understand where he's coming from. Okay. <laughs> uh, the Bad News Bears. Oh. Okay. And Breaking Away, which are both... Oh, sports, sports movies, movies yeah. in the 70s. Gets oh. in bright, bright. Let's just talk about Bad News Bears. Sure. But I would put those two together as... Okay. But if it's let's just AB. do Bad News Bears. Let's forget it. But yeah. I just wanted to mention Breaking Away. Um, okay. Bad News Bears, also a movie where the team loses. Yep. yep. Also, this about underdogs. Mm-hmm. All I mean, a total classical music score. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and Language that you would not be able to use in a movie today in 2018. Uh, yeah, yeah, with like, the way they're interacting with each other, the ra- the racism, mm-hmm. the misogyny, everything that's spilling out. Yeah, I don't the even... treatment. What the treatment from mouth out to those kids? You couldn't yeah. get away with. Now. Yeah, yeah, the way he t- yeah he treated those kids. So that I just love it. Love everything about it. It's think one it's, of those. Think it's a class. Is it on your no punting here? Right? No, no, no punting. No. It's one of those movies where like, because you can cherry pick from every decade and be like, well, if you're gonna see the sports movies, these are the best sports movies. And uh-huh. The '70s was always that to me. You got to see this. You got to see this. Like it was on a short list of five movies. Because yeah. mm-hmm. I we we both like sports movies. I'm sure you do too. <laughs> you know, considering that's how we met. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But anyway, give me more about bad uh, bad news bears. That's it. That's it. I mean, okay. if you haven't seen it, it's. Uh, I mean, there's a woman gets to play with the boys' yeah. team. There's a uh, the juvenile delinquent. Mm-hmm. There's great arcs in the movie, and there's the James whatever that kid's name Earl Jackie Earl Haley. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. On his He's motorbike, it, yeah, the young and, tough. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, and without a helmet at times, mm-hmm. <laughs> guys. It's all just a whole different. It is seventies. That is. You know, I can't even quote what the kid says without. I don't want to get your podcast shut down. Oh, please! But literally, a kid says it. Isn't yeah, Tatum yeah. O'Neill? Isn't Tatum O'Neill the girl? Yeah, Tatum O'Neill, yes. is, yeah. The Tatum girl. O'Neill yeah. is amazing in that movie. Right. He's fresh off. Of- it's a good message too. They may lose, but ultimately, they 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 win because they've learned to be greater than themselves. Yeah. Learned things scene, about themselves. And that scene with Vic Morrow yeah. and his kid when he the kid. Mm-hmm. He just berating those yeah. kids and how important it is for when. I just feel like it's. I just feel like it's there's many levels to that movie. Yeah. It's incredible. All right. Because we're just moving through a lot of these. Number nine. What do you got? Heaven Can Wait. Wait, 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 wait a second. Wait a second. Did you? So you, we're not going to talk about Breaking Away. Is that no, no. Yeah. I was just, you were just I, joking. I, was just, I, I wasn't oh, joking, but a little just, bit. He just managed to make his a top 11. He oh, mean, okay. He cheated in that I, one. I don't want to talk about it, but I just. Isn't I, that Dennis Christopher in that film? Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Like Dennis Quaid and. Dennis, uh, it's, is it, no, it's not Costner. Who is, who's the other? Who's the other. It wasn't he? a bunch of like actors that may or may not have gone on to do like a couple things here and there. Yeah, Quaid, oh, yeah. Daniel Stern's in that, and Daniel Stern, Stern is part of the thing. Yeah. Go, it's yeah. just an insane movie directed by Peter. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> you're number nine. Heaven can wait. 
Heaven Can Wait. Is that any? The Warren Beatty one? Yeah. Yes. Not in my list, but that's no, a good my movie. God. Let me tell you why. This is, first, first of all, I feel like. Yeah, we've Warren, got Warren Beatty. <laughs> I don't know. There's like a two tow trucks or something yeah, outside. There's, there's a police outside. action going on right outside <laughs> yeah. the window. We're safe in here. We're safe in here. Um, Let's <laughs> not pretend that's not happening. Um, we tried for a while. Yeah. Well, this is as a comedy aficionado. Yeah. I feel like it's one of the great romantic comedies of the decade. It has Warren Beatty, who okay. to me is maybe the great sex symbol of the decade. Wow. Sure. Um, it is written by uh, uh, Elaine May mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and a guy named... Um, is it Mike Nichols? No. No, 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 not Mike Nichols. Okay. Oh, I can't think of the dude's name. He also wrote... Uh, Oh man, this we don't is bad. like this is bad. No, don't, yeah. look don't look it up. Don't look we it up. Don't look it up. We don't like dead See air on the pull. podcast. Uh, I'll, I'll pull it in a second. Okay, and uh, and it's got Diane Cannon, mm-hmm. and it's just this beautiful seventies movie. Yeah, and with Julie Christie, and just a great romantic. And a sports movie as well. Yes. It's also a sports movie. The first time I saw that, it's yeah. a remake of an old movie. Here comes Mr. Jordan. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, so it's. Uh, I don't know. It's just I, lo- I love it. Mm-hmm. I love. And again, that easily could have been Rocky or you know Taxi Driver or any of these other right. movies you guys said. Uh, okay. Well, he's a yeah. quarterback of the L.A. Rams, and uh, he dies in an accident. Uh, then he goes to heaven. Goes to the angel. Angel sends him back because they he's, made a mistake. Because they made yep. a mistake, and he's in the body of someone else. I think. Yes, he's in the body of an industrialist. Yes, and it's and it's all what he has to do in exploring his life, remembering who he was before and who he's supposed to be now. It's very fun. It's, about, yeah. it's very existential. It's, yeah. it's, and it's hilarious. Yes. It's hilarious all the way through. Mm-hmm. I think I can remember that guy's name. Okay. <laughs> eight is a punt. <laughs> so eight, like, okay. eight was a punt. Give okay. us your number seven. Number seven. This isn't a cheat, but this is a little nuancy. Okay. Wait, wait, what do you got? A three way tie at number seven? <laughs> it's actually four. It's actually what? four. Oh. No, but it's about this director named Hal Ashby. Yes. Okay. And the movie I'm picking is Harold and Maud. Oh. Okay. Not the which, last detail. You're taking Harold and Maud. Right, not okay. the la- and uh, who was this incredible seventies director? Yes. I feel like maybe even the quintessential one because he did that shampoo, being there, coming home, did all these amazing movies. But Harold and Maude, for some reason, for me, has a special place because okay. it bombed when it came mm-hmm. out, and it was only rediscovered later. Okay. And it's about this young kid who has a relationship with, um, she's like in her seventies, yeah, 80s. yeah a much older woman, yeah, it's, and it's uh, Bud Court. Is yeah, Bud Corp plays the kid, yeah. and uh, Ruth Gordon is Ruth obviously Gordon. amazing. And it's it, the end. The twist at the end is incredible, and he's constantly trying to pretend to kill himself. Mm-hmm. It's super black. It's as black a black comedy as you can get, and I think indicative of the de- the experimental of that decade. Mm-hmm. You know. Okay. That mm-hmm. film still lives on. Have you seen it ever, Harold I, Lamont? I've seen I've seen the whole thing, but I've seen it in yeah. chunks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That film still lives on. I, I recently was working at Harry Potter uh, at Universal Studios for a year and a half. Mm-hmm. One of the young assistants, 27 years old, coming yeah. out of film school, Harold and Maude is her favorite film. And that it's something about yeah, that this. film that speaks mm-hmm. generationally to people who are out of place or feel weird or not quite normal like everyone else and see a film like this and they gravitate and they understand Bud Court's character, they understand Ruth Gordon's character and they gravitate to this yeah. relationship because of what it shows. And so it's a, it's a very much well, has cult it's, it's status. It's the most unlikely love story yes. yeah, but maybe ever filmed it's up honest. until Shape of Water or something. I mean, All you right, have to sure. go literally yeah. E.T. to a person, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> I don't want to Wait, give it away, but right. uh, some weird stuff happens in that movie. <laughs> okay, number six. Yeah. This is also a little bit of a cheat, but I'm going to say 1974, this comedy director released his two best movies in one year. Okay. Which I don't think ever has happened in the history of Hollywood. Okay. I mean, directors have had two great movies. Might be a good category mm-hmm. for you guys. Sure. Movies where directors had two things. Mm-hmm. But uh, his name was Mel Brooks, and he released. So coming. Released Blazing Saddles and Young Frankenstein in '74. All right, what are you taking? I'm taking Blazing Saddles by a hair. All right, okay. even though I think Young Frankenstein is a better movie. Yes, yes. that's what I say. Is a better movie. I will give you that. Yes, but I feel there's a moment in Blazing Saddles that surpasses anything that was in either one of those movies. What? So what? The, again, 
Young Frankenstein, definitely a better movie. Uh-huh. By the way, both of these films are not based on original Mel Brooks ideas. Mm. Interesting. Just something to think about. Um, Pryor wrote Blazing Saddles, didn't he? Well, yeah, he was part of that, too. But yeah, it was originally yeah. a spec script called Red, okay. whatever that was, Red Ranger, something like that. And then, uh, yes, he was part of that team that wrote it. Mm-hmm. And Young Frankenstein is obviously <sighs> Gene Milder. Right, yeah. right, right. So, uh, but the scene... And Blazing Saddles, when they, towards the end of the movie, when Blazing Saddles basically attacks another movie on the back lot. Yes. Oh. <laughs> so okay. now you're a movie, in the, it's not just <laughs> breaking the fourth wall, which we've seen the Marsh yeah. Brothers did that. Every, it's obliterating reality. Yeah. It is like now you're watching another movie with, the, you know, this thing with his, um, Dom DeLuise, he's yeah. teaching all of that. Then it gets even more mind blowing when they run to the man's Chinese theater <laughs> into a movie called Blazing Saddles. <laughs> and then they sit and they're watching Blazing Saddles while yeah. they're in the movie. Blazing Sa- It is so meta. And you know, I know meta comedy is like very popular. Yeah. I feel like that, there's, you can't get any more meta than that. Yeah. I mean, that's like adaptation level yeah. meta. Oh, I, I mean, it's like Charlie Kaufman level. Oh. I mean, I just feel like that was Mel Brooks' most genius move. Mm-hmm. Uh, excuse me, one of the most genius moves in the history of comedy sure. is that move of like wow. that and that thing. And even the jokes all the way to, you know, when mm-hmm. Harvey Kite Corman, I almost said Kite Kitel, Harvey Corman like goes to the man's Chinese theater. He's like, Student, you know, he has a student. I mean, just like the crazy. <laughs> because that character would. Yeah, yeah, that character yeah, would that try to get the would. cheaper ticket. Exactly. exactly. So, would. so now this guy is in the West is going to a movie and watching. And uh, I just. And then the two of them go in the theater on horseback. Right. I don't know. I just feel like that bloom. Again, it's a good joke. Beginning to end, I feel like it's better than a good joke. I feel like beginning to end. Young Frankenstein. Yeah. And what a year for Mel Brooks, 1974. Oh, yeah. What a year, 1974. Mm-hmm. Like, we had Chinatown came out that year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So it's... Uh, it's. I saw it two or three Godfather years ago two, oh, at the TCM Festival yeah. with Mel. Yeah. Mel introduced it, talked about it, and nice. then sat down like two rows in front of us and watched the film with us, uh, which was insane. And was For uh, Blazing Saddles? Yeah, for Blazing yeah. Saddles. Incredible experience. Well, he's into it now. And... Yeah. Yeah. Again, I hate to say it. It's like you can't even kind of use that language or make those jokes anymore. Right, People, right, right. it just blows. You show it to a millennial, it blows their head. Yeah. yeah. They can't imagine someone could be making fun of the, like, yeah. I love it. Yeah. I yeah. love it. That people weren't worried about. Did I talk offending. too much about it? No. No, no, no. no. Okay, okay. You're not talking enough is my basic yeah. feeling about these films. But uh, Cleep on Little uh, it was supposed to be Richard Pryor. Yeah, but it was. the studio would not approve him. No, so, so Mel with... kept him on though to write the script with him and, and yeah. whatever. So it's so much. It'd be interesting there. if that movie was as successful with Pryor because later on, mm-hmm. obviously, him and Wilder have that great coupling over a series of movies. But mm-hmm. you know, Pryor, how much acting had he really done on that yeah, level true. at that point? So can you carry a movie like this? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe he could have. Pryor well, was really talented. I have no idea, but. In both films, like he said, he he's, when he breaks into the the joke you were talking, when he breaks into Dom, <laughs> the Busby Berkeley musical yeah. that they're essentially doing, and Young Frankenstein does the same thing by kind of sending up these Frank Whale movies and doing yeah. his. Oh, so he has a lot of reverence for these films, yeah. No, I even mean, though Young he makes fun of them, is, which is great. Is a, they're both parodies yeah. of yeah. movies, yeah. But Young Frankenstein doesn't ever leave, and suddenly no, 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 no. You're in true 1973 think- on a. Stu- <laughs> <laughs> like the fart scene kills me about oh, that movie. Yeah, I can't yeah, watch yeah. it. I can't watch it. You don't like it. That fart scene? Yeah, I that, hate it. But that was his way of breaking down this idea so of the fun. West. The West with these heroes yeah, sure. and legends. It's yeah, like, they oh, would always show the beans. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. yeah. I agree with you. That's not a great joke. And I feel like people think that. <laughs> and it just the... keeps going. And even as a kid, when that should have appealed to me most, yeah. just like not really understanding all the humor and the layers. Right, but right. hey, a fart scene. What kid? And even that, I was like, ah, I just don't get this. <laughs> I love, well, I, love I like it now as an adult for. You, don't, yeah. you get it. You just don't I like do. it. I do. Well, I just don't. Yeah, It's a baked beans joke. I love Slim Pickens in that movie too. He's so oh, it's insane. It's it's the whole thing. Harvey no. Corman yeah. kills it for Corman me. Corman I love Harvey. So yeah, I love Corman and Madeline, the great Madeline, late great Madeline Kahn as well. Yeah, well, she's never, in both of them. Never she's more a... sexy than she is in both those films. My God, she's sexy as hell in both those films for different reasons. Yeah, for different reasons. Of course, incredibly funny, but also very sexy. But can you imagine the same year your two best movies? And would would you agree those are his two best movies? 
Well, Frankenstein's probably my favorite of his for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's better than the producers. I think yeah. it's better. Yeah, than, certainly better than producers. I don't know. The Spaceball fans out there are no, going to be mad at me. I'm not a Spaceball people fan. People do love that. The uh, Men in Tights. Uh, yeah. High anxiety people like. High anxiety. Liked. I mean, they're all good. But, yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, they're, but yeah, I feel like right, those pound are pound. That's yeah. Pound for pound. Well, I guess you're right. Okay. That's never been done. Okay. Yeah, unless that was you're a really big producers fan or Spaceballs. Oh. I think those are the only two that would. Yeah. Yeah. That was your number what? Six or five? Yeah, yeah, I'm six. I'm okay. done. I'm All sure right, so my number six. five okay. then uh, is Jaws. That's a punt. Uh, That's ooh. above five or four or three? Yeah. Okay. Ooh. All right. Just so make we, sure. We, and you don't have it? Do we go one on one, one now? No, we go, I'm doing three, so it goes three, 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 and then right. one, one, one. Right, so you're doing four next, right? Yeah, I'm doing four. Yeah. Well, uh, because he punted, we can't talk about yeah. it. So yeah, so you don't have it? I have it. We can't punt, but he punted, so we have to wait oh, for him. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes. Oh, wow. Well, we four. all love Jaws. I love it. I love four it. So with the lowest, Jaws is five on someone's list. Yeah, the lowest. Yeah, the lowest. Can we draw that conclusion? Yeah. yeah. Four yes. for me is uh, Apocalypse Now. Uh, that's a punt. Okay. Wow. Not my... My number three is a punt from earlier, which okay. is Star Wars. Oh, we're ready to talk about yeah, it? If it's not yeah. on your list. It's, it's not okay, on, I mean, it was, all, it was, uh, yeah, I mean, it was on my, it was on eight or yeah. something. Yeah. 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 Um, First of it. all, can I just, before we even start, <laughs> put up the defense now? No, just because I'm a stickler for facts. Yes. Yeah. Earlier, someone referred to that movie as Star Wars. Episode uh, four, New Hope. Yes. Yeah, which it was never in the 70s called. That. Okay. Yeah, it was Star we, Wars. Yeah, that's what I knew it as a kid. No, you're one of those. All right, go ahead. It, that's what it was for me, too, as a kid. <gasps> oh, it, Star Wars. It was Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, and Jedi. I'm yeah. sure he was Wayne David Fetterman, and then he became Wayne Fetterman. <laughs> He's allowed, I mean, George Lucas is allowed to call his film what he wants to call himself. No, I'm just saying it was retitled yes. in 1981. By George Lucas. He's allowed to call I his guess, film as he wishes. 100%. You're missing my point. <laughs> I didn't think it's interesting a movie was retitled. Yeah. In fact, I can't think of another movie where that's true. I, uh, well, Empire Strikes Back was retitled. The, really? the Tom Cruise one uh, that what? just came out a couple years ago, oh. they changed it to Live, Die, Repeat. Yes. From, Edge of uh, Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow. Yes. They did that like six months to a year later. Mm-hmm. I think it was six months uh. because they thought it was better branding for like DVD sales and stuff. Oh. Which is ridiculous. And foreign markets. But wait, okay, let me it, put it this way. Then I believe they changed right. it back. But Wayne is absolutely right. It was Star Wars. That's yeah. what we knew it as when we grew up. It was up Star as kids. Wars, and it yeah. was the most popular movie of the decade. Yes, it made more doubt. money than any other movie. Mm-hmm. So that that movie would be slightly rebranded, slightly rebranded, mm-hmm. so it became part of a thing. I just think it's interesting. Maybe mm-hmm. maybe just knew he had something that was huge, and it didn't matter. <laughs> Like because the next one was so good and, and oh, well, it was incredible. Did the crawl it, never say it says a new hope for a new hope? Nope. Oh, I really? The crawl did. It did not. The original didn't? Oh. I promise you, okay. it didn't. I'm saying it loud with a lot of conviction. <laughs> I could be wrong, it but I am, true, I'm in the 95% certainty. Okay. Because okay. I, re- I think I would have, yeah. yeah. And then they redid the crawl. Oh. That I didn't know. Yeah. I just thought oh. that was the, like, the understood title is A New Hope, all that jazz. Yeah. Just It's Star Wars. I don't, even think, Star it, Wars. I don't even say, think it was A New Hope. I don't even think any of that was part of it. I, Okay. That's interesting. Yeah, I don't. Right. I've never. I'm, I guess galaxy, I've never seen original cut. Then you know, yeah. far, far, far away, a long time, whatever that was. Yeah. yeah. And another reason I love that movie and is on my is that it takes place in the past, even though you mm-hmm. think it's a future movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. It's yes. just a galaxy far, far away. Right. Yeah. So yeah. You can do anything you want there. It's, well, go ahead. I know. I feel like I've spoken too much about that, that's but all right. I, I'm pretty sure about it. And I do is. think it is a. I do think it is an interesting thing in the history of movies. Mm-hmm. It is. It spawned a it's billion dollar industry. I think it's way more influential than Superman. But you feel like the Marvel and all of that is direct line to Superman. To Superman, yes. Not to Star True, Wars. just yeah. no. Because I think Star Wars is something else. else. It is. Right? It's a okay. space opera. That's not yeah, a superhero. Yeah, yeah but it's hybridized with like aspects of superherodom with lightsabers and all that. Sure. And the mysticism it creates. And then it's also. Isn't yeah. it a space western? Yeah. Uh, you could make that case, but you could also. I think it's more close to The Lord of the Rings than it is to any superhero film because you're Why creating. Why would you a... call it an opera? Why well, are you calling it an opera? Well, because of all the grandiose things that are happening. The score itself is uh-huh. very grand. Uh-huh. So it's very. It's presented in a way that's very. And I think. Lucas calls it a space opera when he describes it. He did? It. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, I'm not like a nut for okay. all of those. I mean, I feel like there's two yeah. good 
good movies and the whole thing. So. Yeah, but I, because I grew up with it so much, even it doesn't matter because those others still resonate with me. They do. Mm-hmm. They do. Like the my dislike of them is to the Part marrow. Yeah, <laughs> to the marrow. It's like I this to me when I saw this movie, I was blown away. Right. And my dad took me to uh, Empire. I told this story yes. like like a month ago. I was so young. I sat on his lap, and I must have gotten so scared. I just I let go. Just let all my faculties just went. <laughs> I peed all over him. <laughs> it's like a one and a half or two year old. I was sitting on his lap watching Empire. But I have oh, that's loved... right. You would have been too. Yeah. 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 He, took, he sat there and yeah. I don't know how far I made it. That's all he remembers. He's like, oh, I had to, you just. And I was like, oh, I just found this out like a month ago, two months ago. It's like, I didn't know that. Was it Jabba the Hutt? What was it? Uh, Jabba wasn't an empire. Jabba wasn't an empire. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Yeah. It's... I have no idea. I was. He doesn't remember. He just remembers that. That's what he took away. Here's something I remember about. I know we're talking about. That's the fine. Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. Uh, Trust me, anybody listening knows everything about Star Wars. Yes. Yeah, so it they do. Matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay, never mind. They probably know this. No, no, no. I'm no, saying, no, I'm saying like, it. we can talk about it. We yeah. can also talk about Star Wars itself, and they're yeah. going to be just as happy. Oh, okay. The, um, I do know that there was no theme for... Who, Vader or something? Yeah, Vader. Oh. That came in, that came in, the, in the two. Oh, mm-hmm. in two. Right. Oh, okay. Have his own dun, music to present. Dun, dun, yes. Dun, 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 okay. Dun. I mean, they had like a... Kind of a minor key music mm-hmm. thing, but that theme of what's it called? What's the name of that? The March. The, of the, yeah, yeah march. it's a march. Yeah. Uh, but I would assume it's yeah, it's Vader's okay, march. Right or now, Vader's... there's Star Wars not screaming. Oh yeah, going sure, the, sure. Right now, I, I apologize. Yeah. Yeah, we we did a Star Wars show for the the last one that came out. And we did yeah. secondary characters. We brought a guy on that you could literally ask him. Any Star Wars que- uh, question? Imperial March. Imperial March. That's Imperial it. March. That's it. The Imperial March. Thank, and you. Thank you. He had like a 99% chance of knowing the answer. Uh. He was so impressed. Like, you could ask him anything. I asked him random things that popped up, and he's like, oh, that was this. And yeah. I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe you know that. Of That's course, amazing. Of course. No, it's great. No, I, I, Star Wars was, again, I feel like I'm the only one of the three who was, uh, like, conscious mm-hmm. when that came out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I saw it uh, in uh, Boston. Oh, wow. You know, with the first run of it, because uh, it, it was only in like not a lot of theaters mm-hmm. in May when it came out and then like opened wider. And it was incredible, like yeah. how quickly the lines just. Yeah. They, and yeah. People it kept, stayed and people kept going back to see it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Over like, and over immediately. And over again. It was I mean, it was it was like not unlike Jaws, you know, mm-hmm. but uh, which we'll talk about later. But. I don't know. Go ahead. Back then, you couldn't buy the tickets ahead of time, right? No. You had to stand in line. Yeah, and get for those everything. Tickets. I remember standing in line to get tickets for concerts. Oh, yeah. yeah that's like, right. They started phasing that out a few years after I started doing that. Ticketron. I remember yeah, lotteries. Yeah, going in there, being like, come on, come on. And they're just like, punch faster, punch faster. Not knowing how anything works. You just assume it's all speed or whatever. I remember lotteries. First concert I went to, I, yeah. I, 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 I drove. I was there at 2 a.m. waiting for the box office to open at 7 in line. What? I don't remember can, that. Can you tell me? Do you remember the artist? Yeah, Bruce Hornsby in the range, 1989 oh at the Patriot yeah. Center in George Mason and Fairfax. Okay. I remember. I was like, the George, Bruce Hornsby was like my favorite group at the time. And Scenes, of South, Scenes from the South Side just came out. And I'm like, I'm going to see these guys. I'm going to get front row tickets. And damn, getting there at that time, I absolutely got front row tickets. One of the greatest experience of my life. And but I remember what it was, and, But I don't go to a lot of uh, concerts. So to me, that was one of the experiences yeah. of having to wait around. All, and there was a lottery, and there was still a lottery. Like when you got there, it was still a lottery. So you just got a, a better number, and then they chose the number out of hats and lottery, and then oh, they see. get the ticket. Yeah, so see, see. it was insane. It was insane. insane. Uh, but anyway, Star Wars, uh, what a fantastic film. Spawned everything <laughs> that spawned everything. I, you know, uh, today I was on Jedi Council over at Collider. We were talking all things Star Wars for an hour and a half on the show today. So it's like, it's a, it's a thing that is. The uh, just a foundation of what we see now in nerd and geek culture in yeah. the nerdum. All these, all these uh, uh, websites that are out there now. All these uh, uh, places like I work at a Collider or these YouTube networks. Hell, that, the idea of collectibles. Co- yes, it's toys. Well, all first that. of all, yeah. I think that's over. No, I'm saying in regards like to this broad spectrum campaign. If the movie's big enough, you could put it and sell it in. <laughs> I like, you know, I saw it stamped on uh, paper towels, yes. like on the outside, like, you know, mm-hmm. clean up with the force. Yeah, and you're yeah. like, oh, my God, <laughs> Disney's just putting this with everybody. That, that's, it has that presence in my Disney. life. It wasn't Disney. It was Fox. Yeah, yeah. The first but one. But I'm saying, yeah. but now they've managed to scale it up yes. even more. Oh, and yes. the weird thing is, because it's Star Wars, I don't feel it's misplaced. Because, like, if you're going to do it with one mo- movie, mm-hmm. this is the only one you could really do it with. Yeah, one franchise. Yeah, that's yeah. this one. Yeah. It, yeah, they, it's incredible. It's yeah. amazing. It's incre- and if I'm not mistaken, because I'm a big follower of box office mm-hmm. 
And I know it was the number one box office film mm-hmm. of the decade of the 70s. And the reboot, or not the reboot, or episode... Force Awakens. Force Awakens. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Is is number right one. now is number one All of, time. His, yeah. of 1. the 2 billion. What yeah. do we call it? Yeah, 1.5 billion. So that'll be the first time that'll ever oh. happen, has ever happened in the history of Hollywood. I think it's more than that. I think it's crossed 2 billion. Force it Awakens. has. Yeah. I, I think what I'm doing just domestic. Yeah, just yeah. doing oh, domestic. Oh, just domestic. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so... But that's never happened in the history right. of movies. That's and, how insane a movie Star Wars. Yeah, and it'll yeah. do it again too. Yeah. The, what do you mean? They'll have a third. They'll have a third one that supplants Force Awakens. Once it gets big enough. Yeah, because now we have a Star Wars every year. So eventually, like people will probably get a little bit tired of it, and then one will come back, and it'll just be so huge. But this one is not making as much as Force no, no, Awakens. it's not. That's but what it's I'm no. saying. It's one point three billion, which is not bad. Yeah, no. Oh, it's great. It's no, well, it's not bad. It's no great. bad. Yeah. It is. In comparison, though, it's not as good. But I think because Force Awakens was an event, man. Oh, my people God. People had waited. Man, yeah. People yeah. didn't like the prequels for the most part. People had waited to see Star Wars again. Right. And the early reviews well, were so glowing. All, posi- like, all possibilities were on the table. Yeah. Like, where are we going? I can't wait. Please, I've been wanting to extend this story for mm-hmm. a decade, two yeah. decades, three decades. It's amazing. I want to see it's the amazing. Again. amazing. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, I mean, in the history of the... Right. Movies right. is what we're talking about. Yeah. But, and, and this is what's incredible about what George Lucas did. I mean, of course, Steven Spielberg, Spielberg helped him as well. This is a film that took the, the uh, sci-fi genre and brought it out of this idea that it could it was Flash Gordon or it was yeah. that yeah. kind of stuff. Only for kids. Only for kids, right. It made it adult. Yet yeah, it appealed to adults and kids at mm-hmm. the same time, which is really incredible to do. Uh, of course, you could say 2001 is the greatest sci-fi film of all time. People have made that argument. But I also think Star Wars, a few years later... Couldn't be in that argument as well because of what happened as a result. Thank you so. for calling us Star Wars. <laughs> I appreciate it. I feel like I won that argument. You did. Wait, Keep going. You did. Uh, All right. uh, so I love that, that movie. My, that yeah. was my three. What do you got? Oh, okay. So that my number five uh, is Alien, which was a punt, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. All right. I'm, I'm I'm not on your list or on your list? I'm not on my list, but okay. definitely on my yeah. um, uh, bubble. This, uh, this one, man. Ridley Scott, Sigourney Weaver, Tom Skerritt, Yafet Koto, Harry Dean Stanton. So many incredible uh, actors, Veronica Cartwright, like just incredible. And then set in space, this idea that we had just started going into space in the 60s. And of course, if we're going to go into a place, mm-hmm. we've got to find the horror of it, right? That's just how we're built to do things. But most things about space were about the horror of even right. in the 50s when the yeah it's becomes, always, oh yeah cl- cl- creature from outer space yeah, yeah, so, and all of yeah, that. yeah, yeah. yeah. aliens it are always comes. bad it's right never good it's never <laughs> contact because that doesn't sell as many seats right well et and close yeah. encounters et too. was the most but popular movie of the 80s you mm-hmm. would say about 90 percent of alien movies is they're not our friends right they're right. coming to right. you know even bad ones would battle la just like right. yeah. to steal our water yeah. oh to eat people yeah. yeah, to serve man or yeah. whatever that was. But this was something else because this was a mythology, right? And he, yeah, yeah. And they discovered it. And when you see the film, it still holds up today. Oh, yeah. It's even my with favorite the, of the series. Right. It even is. Even with the yeah. old technology, it still holds up today. Even the sounds are you know, oh, those just things going up and down. The terror it still works. Yeah. and the, the weird scene. So it's a ship in outer space, but yet there's like chains hanging down and water yes. dripping. And you're like... Uh, this whole thing seems like a bad idea because you're in the vacuum of space on a rickety, you know, submarine in essence. Yeah. Right. But yeah, there's the amount of terror they build up, just pure suspense. Mm-hmm. We're not going to show you. It's going to come from the shadows. Yeah. It's going to be quick cuts. It's going to be, but it's, it is just fantastic. I, I had seen aliens and maybe even alien three before I saw alien. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I grew up with aliens. I rented that on VHS when I wasn't supposed to. Right. And watched that with some buddies at a sleepover. And then, uh, I, I How did you do? Did you urinate again? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just seeing if there's a theme. Yeah, yes, I did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Utterly fine. <laughs> Just all over my friends. It's like, oh my god, I can't right, take right, it. Right, That's how I process fear. I just of course, of course. start now. I at least open my fly so yeah, I don't yeah, ruin yeah, my yeah. pants. Oh, of course, of course. it's hell of a scene. Of course, of course. It's a scene. Those movies are scary. Uh, I don't no, shame, no shame. No shame. No <laughs> shame. <laughs> anyway, I just, I just think it's incredible. Uh, it's a great script. And <laughs> good segue. The, 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 good segue. <laughs> I don't know what to add to the peak of it. <laughs> Unless you're Trump, I don't know what to add to the P comment. But like when when it's when it goes uh, as it progresses through the movie, 
uh, it's ironic because you start out thinking the conventional thing is that yeah. Tom Scare will be the hero. It'll be the male hero. And as it uh, slowly falls away, it's Sigourney Weaver, the one who is st- stringent about the rules. If they had listened to her, this thing yeah. would have never gotten right. on the right. ship. And she shouldn't have died because she was the only one in the right, ultimately. Exactly. The right. whole time. And in her underwear, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, at the end. Yes. Yes. Isn't that <laughs> no. the important thing? Very cute. Yes. First of all, I like aliens better than alien. I don't know what's and, wrong with you. Okay. I, I was there when alien... Opened. Yeah. Okay. I have the button. <laughs> what is you the button? You want to guess what's on the button? Uh, uh, this... I'll give you a hint. Okay. It's not in space. No one can hear your screen. Okay. Is it just the egg? It's cracking? a 20th Century Fox right on the side. It is words on there, and oh. it doesn't have the word alien on it. Okay. Okay. Um, have the button. They were giving them out to get people to go see this movie. I got no guess because yeah. if it's not the scream, then what's an I give you a hint. Line. Go ahead. So we're gain- so gainy. So Gurney Weaver sings it at the end of the movie. Oh, shit. When she's... Oh, Jesus. You remember when she's... Yeah, I know what you mean, but I don't remember... Oh, what is it? I don't remember the song. You are my lucky star. Oh. You are my... Anyway, that was on the pin, and then 20th Century... Wow. Did she have it? that? Yeah. I I know. As if that's the defining like <laughs> scene in the movie, <laughs> and we're all going, "Whoa, alien!" Right there. You are my lucky star, and that's uh, yeah. So, anyway, I I like Alien a mm-hmm. lot. This is what I don't like about Alien. What? What? Don't attack me. It's not set in Chinatown. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way. No, it did did have an alien in it. Did. I didn't like the cat stuff at the end. I felt like it. Bought. With Jonesy? Yeah. What? Why? Like how? It was so? like people are getting killed and the thing, and I was like, "Oh, let me go back by have, myself." Have you f- have you met a woman who owns a cat? Like they could give a fuck about humans. Yeah, she was when it comes to their cat. That. That's the only other character technically yeah. uh, that didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> you guys <laughs> really say, broke down. I'm just movie. telling you, a woman would sacrifice five humans for her cat. I tell you right fucking now, it's the truth. It's insane. yeah. It doesn't bother me. I I understand your argument. I just but feel no, like yeah. it would be a flea situation, a fight or flee, and like why would you go back? I don't. Okay. I, well, in Aliens, why did the Marines disregard a direct order to not fire in a nuclear reactor? And they are like, I, I got these spare clips, homie. <laughs> and he hands out clips to it's just like, yeah, it's a movie. Yeah. Well, you can say that about anything. But I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> yes. Your argument is undercut by your no, favorite No, I movie. felt like it wasn't true to the um, the amount of danger she was in and the okay. amount uh, that she was like, oh, let me go try to find my cat. But mm-hmm. I also think narrative-wise it works because it shows her as a person. As I get it. I get you know, it. as a good person. She's I, get it. I like the movie. Creature. I like the movie. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. obviously one of the... That, it, if you, know, you do a montage of scenes from movies or moments in movies, oh, yeah. the, she does the, the coming thing. out of the chest alien thing. Yeah. The, John right? oh, great. the fact they didn't tell them beforehand and they all experienced it. And you oh. see that on their faces, yeah. the registered fear. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I really awesome. never told them. Like, Veronica Cartwright is legitimately yeah, reacting just to like, it. Yeah, just like so she petrified. Like, told. what the fuck is going on? Like, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's That that shot is none of them know except mm-hmm. for... The, uh, John the actor, yeah, thank yeah. you. They don't see any of the the special effects guys. Well, with the I, mean, rig. They, I think they see. They obviously see the way he's situated, but they didn't know he was going to come erupting out with blood squirting yeah. everywhere and yeah. this just disgusting. That's the story, yeah. at least. Those are the days. Those were the days. Of, I'm dubious. Uh, I'm dubious. You are acting royalty, so you know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to take that under advisement. I have been in Step Brothers. <laughs> yeah, so, just saying. Uh, <laughs> I shook your hand when I got in, which means technically, by the laws of, of whatever that is, I've shaken Brando's That's hand. Right. No question. No question. <laughs> yeah. Kaboom. Hope you enjoyed talk. <laughs> <laughs> no question. Yeah. Well, anyway, I, I like right. Alien. I like Alien. Again, Aliens is more of an adventure movie. Alien it's is sci-fi. It's more fun. No it's more question, fun. right? Aliens is a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 And it also has the, well, anyway, real quickly, just the great, the guy who's just like, let's just call it a draw. Oh, yeah. The yeah. Like great yeah. Bill Paxson. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Like that character in yeah. a movie where it's like, well, let's get out of here. What are yeah. we, why are we even trying to, to fight? Yeah. Orbit and nuke it. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you like put her in charge? You know, all of those <laughs> lines were just in the audience. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I thought it was next level. Keep uh, going. All right. So that was my number. What? So we'll get you five or four. Six, four? five, yeah. four. So then my four is Jaws. Are we still punting? That's a punt. That's a punt. It's a punt. All right. So then my number three, yes? Yeah. Yep. The Godfather. That's my number three. Mm-hmm. That is a punt, unless, do you have it? I don't have, and the only reason I didn't put The Godfather on, because I just feel like it's the greatest movie ever made, and like, like, yeah, I have no problem with, with The Godfather, yeah. 
Okay. Let's talk about the Godfather. So we're, oh, you're we're punting punt by one because we still have to get through his three. Yeah. I've just yeah. told you my order, but I, I don't know. Okay. That I didn't kn- make sense to me. My brain can't this process This is your guest exactly. you bought on our show. I know, but it was like I didn't want to waste a thing for the guy because I knew you guys were going to have the guy. That's fine. That's yeah, fine. That was all. That we, was, I mean, and yet you've given. done director year. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> I did do director year. I did. Do you cheating son of a bitch. I'm you didn't put Godfather so, in so you could put another slot of one of your favorite yeah, movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, fine. fucked <laughs> up, man. Go ahead. All right. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> What's your number five? Okay, this one no, you, no one's going to have. Okay, number five. Shampoo. <laughs> I love Beatty in the 70s. This is uh um, Python. I can so we I'm so weird. Yeah. Um this is called All That Jazz. It's a oh, okay. movie by Bob Fosse. The Roy Scheider film? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And I put it and cuz I feel like he made those two great movies, Cabaret and All That Jazz mm-hmm. in the 70s. He only made I think five movies in his whole life. So, uh-huh. um I just feel like it's I'm not going to go on because I feel like you guys aren't into it, but no, I like I, that. Movie. I feel like all that jazz to me is avant-garde by today's standard. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's how ahead of its time it was, yeah. and it's the again I like existential movies, and I just I, <laughs> hold, on, hold on, hold on, you like existential <laughs> movies without ambiguity, yes, <laughs> which is a conundrum. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Yeah. You I, want a question for the ages, but you can wrap it up in. I need it very wrapped up in a bow. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You're yeah. a complex man. I'm very complex. This, this onion has layers. <laughs> yes, this is true. This is I do like genius. The, the question, right. the biggest thing, but not right. Oh, yeah. Oh. So I, I anyway, I, I, tell me incredible. I've and never can I just make it. a little trivia question? A little trivia. Sure, thing. Please, sure. please. Please the Godfather, it. which we're going to talk about. Yeah. In 19- <laughs> Thank God. No, this is, this How is, does this tie in? This, 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 compl- this is Bob <laughs> Fosse. This is Bob oh, okay, Fosse okay, okay. related. Again, I kind of go more direct. You know, like. <clears throat> yes. When The Godfather came out, yeah. one best picture, 72. Mm-hmm. Francis Ford Coppola, who wrote Patton, we now know. Yeah. Thanks to me. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> did not win best director because mm-hmm. he got beat by Bob Fosse for Cabaret. Right. Interesting. Okay. So uh, just a little ridiculous, fact. but yes, interesting. What? You did know that. It's ridiculous, but yes, interesting. Oh. You mean ridiculous I'm bringing it up? No, ridiculous, or ridiculous for the Academy. 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 Yeah, I mean, come on. It's yeah. Coppola. Sell me on all that jazz because I've only seen like a couple dance numbers. That's it. <laughs> And they were in a Paul Abdul video. No, it seems. <laughs> I know the whole thing seems a little weird, and now that I'm reading it, maybe I should have put it back earlier. I, no, wait. But... It's a good damn movie. It's a great exploration of an artist going through this, uh, where he's at in his life, questioning himself, questioning what to do next. Ben Vereen is fantastic. It's this kind of like, uh, some, somewhat kind of angel or mystical creature mm-hmm. that has to kind of guide him through this moment, and he's going through these. And drugs were a big deal back in the '70s, so it makes sense. People were experiencing themselves this stuff, and you see him as an artist what is he going to do next and you see the mistakes he's made with other people it's he's not a, a nice guy not a nice guy it's almost not semi-biographical very 70s very yeah. sem- unsympathetic main yeah. character yeah. Okay. cheats on his wife right. he's like uh, the and this kid. is the guy from jaws of all places yeah yeah and yeah. roy scheider yeah. Yeah. yeah so i i just love i just feel like to me when i think of 70s movies I'm like yeah. what were they even, how did it even get okay green lit anything right. like that Loved it. And, and then same, what succeeded? In the same, quote, I, same way I'm attracted to Harold Maude. Like, I'm just like, what is going on here? Yeah. Okay. 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 So that is five. Four. Okay. This was somebody else's punt. Okay. This is all the president's men. Do we that was my punt. Okay. So what yeah, do we do? He doesn't have it. We talk about it. Yeah, talk we about do it. talk mm-hmm. about it. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is part of, you know, this this guy, Alan J. Pakula, mm-hmm. who directed this and... Uh, what was it? a marathon man? Wasn't that cool? No, 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 no. He did all of these, like, these, these paranoid, these paranoid mo- Oh, Parallax View. Oh, Parallax View. Yeah, and yeah. then Clued he did in the late 60s. Mm-hmm. And this movie is, ju- I, just re- I just saw it the other night, just because of yeah. the post and what's mm-hmm. going on in the... Mm-hmm. I mean, I obviously it's. And there was your, a there was another one with Liam Neeson like four months ago about the oh, guy yeah. that Mark was Strong, deep throat. Mark felt. Yeah. Mark yes, felt. that's mm-hmm. the one where he's on the commuter on the train, right? Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah, I got it. I, I had to that. walk back and Mark forth felt, up and down yeah, the train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> I didn't see that. I just heard about it. <laughs> My nephew told me he was like, "Oh, it was terrible. I can't believe it." <laughs> yeah. I love Liam, and he was like, "Just walking up and down a damn train." Yeah, I'm like, not going to see that one. <laughs> yeah, me either. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just, I mean, as. A great script, and the uh, the whole the production value, the acting, 
Jason Robarts as uh, Ben Bradley. Oh, so good. Uh, it's a Robert Redford who mm-hmm. was yeah. along with Warren Beatty, I think. And maybe yeah. even Dustin Hoffman, like these sex symbols. Mm-hmm. Because most of the 70s sex symbols were like these kind of nerdy guys. Yeah, nebbish there was, guys. Richard Dreyfuss. Yeah. yeah, it was yeah, Dreyfuss. And, Warren Beatty. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm no, saying no, Warren Baby and Redford the, were definitely. Right. Oh, yeah. The, but I'm saying yeah. there was like. A oh, Richard, the secondary. Richard see, Benjamin was like a yeah, star in the right. 70s. Like these weird kind of like, how is this guy? Elliot Gould was yes, a star yeah. in the 70s. You know, not your normal, like, handsome, goyish. Yeah, matinee kind of, idol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Beatty or um, or Robert Redford. So yeah. I just, I love the script. I, I, I'm kind of blanking on who wrote. Somebody famous wrote this script. Mm-hmm. You won't let me. Oh, look, is it? It's William Goldman, right? Probably. I don't know. Yeah. It is William up. Goldman. That sounds about right. Yeah, I think it's William Goldman. So, uh, uh, production value, seventies aesthetics, mm-hmm. the time they take, all the characters in it. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I just I grew up. I knew the story yeah. of the impeachment, mm-hmm. and then found out about basically it was these two reporters and a source, and just chasing down and, and chasing the leads and all that stuff, and then. To see the movie bring that aspect of the story to life and does it so well, like we we've talked about it a few times because it's come up on other lists. It's so smart it is. Mm-hmm. But my favorite shot is one of the oh. most famous shots. But yeah. when they're in the Library of Congress, oh, it starts yeah. on and the yeah. pullback, and it just it shows you the enormity of trying to find these these needles in a stack of nano needles and yeah. a stack of another like just the the massive problem of this bureaucracy and Man, trying to do anything. Incredible, I agree. That shot yeah. is. Yeah. It reminds me of earlier when we were talking about taxi drivers. Oh, yeah. Same. Yeah, the God's view God shot? shots? God's yeah. view, yeah. yeah. God views. So. Yeah, and it, such incredible performances. They're not like, there's no background. You don't like sit there and get to know their back, like how they came to be reporters. None of that. Yeah, it, you don't need an you're origin story. All, right. It's almost, yeah. it's almost a faux documentary. It's so well done that because the scenes are not conventional scenes. Things don't end or start in conventional ways. They find these people. They have unusual interviews with these, like the guy who, the lawyer they find down in the South. Oh. Who's sitting in the uh, uh, cross legged in his chair yeah. having this conversation with Hoffman? Like, all these people didn't know. And that's why you, this idea of conspiracy theories are interesting because something can exist. It doesn't necessarily have to be a conspiracy theory. There are right. just people along the way who had no idea that what they were doing contributed to the situation yeah. in the yeah. way that it did. Like, I'm a lawyer. Yeah. I'm probably going to go to jail. I'm probably going to go to jail. Yeah. He's just very aware of it. You know, yeah. you know it was nickel and dime stuff. <laughs> Maybe a quarter. <laughs> Maybe a quarter. <laughs> but then you have this great stuff with uh, uh, Stephen Collins and his wife. Yes. Where they're trying uh, to convince yeah. her to talk yeah. and, and all that. So th- there's so much about and, – and Hoffman is using these really dirty tactics, but this is what it took. And even then, they almost lost it. Uh, of course. If, the story of this enormity. Right. If Ben Bradley – if they don't get uh, Jason Robards or Ben Bradley to be on their side to fight for them, if they don't get Deep Throat coming forward to talk about or what he knows. Source and all yeah, that. yeah, all this kind of stuff going through. And if what's incredible, because again, we did this on the Cinephiles a few, weeks, a few years, uh, months ago as well. What's fascinating is when you're watching the actual clips of the conservatives defending Nixon. It is inc- it is exactly yeah. what conservatives are saying now to defend Trump. It's insane the parallels of what we're going through now when you watch that movie. No question, it's, it's- madness. I, I love it. Yeah, yeah. so that's we it are is. In it just, it, it's, yeah, it's just the it's dense. It's seventies. Yes. The whole thing. Okay. Go ahead. That, that was number four. Okay, what's right, what number three? three? Number three, The Exorcist. Okay, it's on my side list. It's on my honor. It is. Okay. Why are you laughing? I'm just, I'm, it's you've got one of the greatest lists I've ever heard in history in my life. The Exorcist. Yes. In my opinion, the greatest. And believe me, the seventies also had Halloween, which created the slasher uh, genre. It, almost put it up there. Yeah, almost yeah. I thought about up. Halloween was like mm-hmm. close to, but I feel like The Exorcist. Took horror to its furthest. I feel like it has not been surpassed since The wow. Exorcist. Okay, as far as using a kid, right? Using a g- innocent girl, yeah. to become the devil. I mean, right. it's a, it's so outrageous and so horrifying. And as you know, I mean, literally, people were like throwing up and mm-hmm. couldn't handle it, and it was. Uh, well, I mean, the, the set is one of the few times where I might believe in a curse. Mm. With all the tragedy yeah. that befell people that are associated, yeah. or while yeah. it's going on, or shortly thereafter, or it's, and it's based on a true with. story. Yeah, because those stairs are in Georgetown. Yeah, you yeah. can go in Georgetown, those stairs. You're right. Yeah, in your exactly. neck of the woods. Yep, exactly. Yeah, so I just feel like it took horror, and especially that score yeah. with the tubular bells mm-hmm. and uh, horror it, is great. 
But when you introduce the devil versus God, yes. it takes it to a whole, whole new other level. place. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You see I agree it with that. I agree. Right. It's not like Last House on the Left no. or any of those, even the zombie movies. It's nothing. It was like your kid could be possessed. And there's a scene, to me, the most two most horrifying scenes in that movie are when the doctor who's smoking yeah. <laughs> gives her a uh, a spinal tap. Yeah. And just the the... Just the way they're the, the pain she's in and what they're putting her through because they think there's something wrong with her mentally. Ah, yeah. uh, it is so brutal. And then finally, she's just like, "I got to go to a priest." Yeah. And this guy has his own, yeah. you know, arc. It is hard to watch, mm-hmm. and it is the language obviously is insane. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I don't know what to say. I mean, I just think it's a mind blowing yeah. film. Yeah, that's a- still. It's shocking to the today. Well, After all we've seen, what I don't know. What, what do you think of horror movie? What is like the yeah. the one where the, the the slasher movies yeah. and what it's a, the, I mean, it, the one it's where a, you put in a videotape and you yeah. die seven days later. The you know, others are all like <laughs> derivative of others, like eventually. But that one is a reference in and of itself because it's referenced. It's like it's part of the cultural lexicon even for a generation now because it's like yeah. the the priest standing up to and then her reaction and all that that. I knew that as like a joke and parody yeah, and yeah, comedy yeah, yeah. before I even saw the movie because right. it was just around. But I can't tell you how like effective and it was a huge box box office success. Yeah. yeah. Surprisingly. Yeah. But uh, anyway. Well, and th- did you see the uh, re-release where they added some yes, footage? Yes, I saw. This the- is what I. This was my take on the re-release. Okay. Was they the added footage didn't help at all and you can you bring but, the mic closer yes, there you go. the uh, the added footage didn't help at all <laughs> but the remixing of the audio helped tremendously yeah, agreed. the mix in that movie is a little weak mm-hmm. and th- that that made it incredible but the new footage it didn't bother you that they slightly changed the title of it it's exorcist <laughs> chapter 1 <laughs> They threw that in there. I don't know if you saw that. I it's did like not the fourth time ever yeah, 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 yeah. in movie history. That would be something that would catch my eye. Thank you uh, for mocking me. I love it. I love it. At least someone's paying attention to me. And I'm talking undivided. to you. I'm talking to you, Mom and Dad. I'm talking to you. <laughs> but I, I did like the spider sequence. Where, you did? Where she closed down the yeah, stairs. Yeah, yeah. Scared the living hell out of me. Okay. So, anybody walking like that is scary. So oh, yeah, the it, it, it worked for me. Just firing oh, out of her mouth as a kid when I saw that. Oh, like, the crucifix. Oh. The crucifix, too, is it? Yeah, the crucifix is, is nuts. <laughs> The fact that that actually still made it in is, of all the things in there. That's what the, again, this goes back to my original thing about now you have an R-rated movie. This is not for kids. Right. We're free to do whatever we want. Yeah. And it is, to me, the scariest moment of that movie was when the first time when her bed is flipping her. Oh, yeah. Still just a girl and screaming. Because she doesn't know what to do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, and the mom's like. (laughs) <laughs> and the doctor's like, "Oh, she had a muscle spasm." He's like, "You didn't yeah. see this." No, when she when the mom walks in that one time yeah. and everything is levitating, she is like you see Ellen Burstyn break in half because yeah. it is a mother's just yeah. my child may be dead right in front of me yeah. or dying right in front of me, and I cannot do anything. And she's yeah. an actress. I mean, yeah. the whole thing is yeah. like, it, it, even as I'm talking about it now, yeah. it's disturbing. Is the word I would use yeah, to describe? It. Okay, all right. So uh, my two was your three, which is Godfather, which is Godfather. Uh, let's talk about it. which let's apparently didn't make it. Wayne's list. Okay, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I just understand your I wanted argument. to add another one. <clears throat> I understand your argument. But, I'm a uh, cheater. Yeah, I think really that's what we're learning. We're learning. Look, we do this all the time. Last week's list, I put a TV movie on because I <laughs> like a TV movie. I hate when he what, does it. You did? Was yeah. it Brian's song? <laughs> no, it was not. <laughs> <laughs> it was Fat Man and Little Boy as my number ten for Paul Newman. HBO one. Yeah. Okay. I like HBO movies, so I said, you know, screw it. Uh, I can't find him. He's my co-host. I can't find was him. Was it yeah. Duel? Um, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> go ahead. So we're going to talk about The Godfather. Right. We are going to talk, gonna talk about The Godfather. Because yeah. we put it on our about list. It that did not win Best Director. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the it's, best American movie ever made? No. No. It's this. Is I mean, it, I, I think another one we're probably going to get yes. to is a better one in my opinion. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. It's the best one ever We've, made. Potentially. Possibly. Uh, the Godfather. Godfather you will admit. On the AFI list, it's up there. It's up On there. the IMDb voting list, it's always number one. Yeah, I don't trust that. Citizen that Kane list. is number one. Oh, no, not true on the IMDb. No, list. I, but it's IMDb is yeah. a bunch of you know, that. That one. That you mean the people? Corrupted. <laughs> you mean we live in a democracy where I don't the people believe get in the to people. decide? Oh. I, yeah, but the problem is, is like uh, 
They'll put Adam Sandler up there. IMDb got, like, it got found out, it was like five years ago, six years ago, that production companies were going on, like when a movie came out, and bumping up their rating on IMDb, and people referenced that, so I don't trust their ratings anymore. Okay, okay. I just, all right. I mean, I was always thought of, whenever I see lists, I always see The Godfather near. near. It's usually, yeah. Yeah, It's always near. near. Sure. Yeah. If I has it. And here's my, if I may, Uh quick, again, I'm more with the trivia. And The Godfather is amazing. This is um, good, both of them. This Godfather Two is amazing. This yeah. might help us win a Shmoda. I don't mind the trivia. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Yes. They don't say the F word in the Godfather. Mm-hmm. Movie about Italian gangsters. No F bombs. No F bombs. Right. So it was like a changing culture. By the time Godfather Two came around, it was a little different. But yeah, but you didn't need it because Brando had such uh, a menacing presence in and yeah. of himself that he doesn't have to resort to that to command your respect. Yeah, it almost feel it would almost feel weird that Michael would stoop to use those words. Eat too, but yeah. not Sonny. No, no, you think Sonny would be all over yeah, that? Sonny be f bombing all over the place. <laughs> of course. Well, I think yeah. Once the dad goes away, maybe Sonny and others have more yeah. liberty. But even he knows, like we oh, talked, like gentlemen. Oh, I see. You're saying that you feel like okay, yeah. The Don would have a certain right. Yeah, I think that he carried so much weight and he didn't use it, so nobody Mm -hmm. else did. That's my guess. Because the lore of that is he's this epicenter of his own universe, Mm -hmm. and it's a hell of a universe. Like there's a lot of power and death and struggle. Right, and 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 he won't sell drugs, so he does have a code. So he's he's got a code. code. So just because he is so huge, and when he goes away, it also strips the illusion of what this world is. Yeah. So like it isn't this altruistic. Like they're all murderers and thieves, mm-hmm. and they're they're and terrible people. They're the best people. deaths, right? Yeah, they're the best yeah. deaths. Yep. Oh my god! Like yeah. that's Brando. It is. Well, him and Sonny. Sonny for the over the top. Like, oh, the I've never believably seen someone get shot thirty two times, but there was one. <laughs> you never saw Bonnie and Clyde? Oh I yeah, like well, but for oh, that yeah. were. Yeah. That one to me seemed realer. No, it was because it wasn't in slow motion, I don't think, was it? No, right. no. He's just getting shot yeah, in the yeah, toll yeah, booth. Yeah. And... He's getting riddled with bull. The bullets, guy you yeah. assume, too, is going to take over. Yeah, Here's yes. the next alpha. Yeah. And they take him out. The yeah. moment that you realize something's wrong at that stop, and he turns and the yes. guy walks, oh! Because he drops the coin on purpose. Yes, yeah. oh my God. You're like, oh no. Oh, oh it's just such tight, beautiful filmmaking. Yeah. And- Gordon Willis uh, was the cinematographer, yes. if I'm not mistaken. Mm hmm. And what's incredible, too, was, <clears throat> once again, here's the 70s with another genre of films, which is these gangster films, which were, uh, you know, of course, James Cagney had yeah. done his work there. But by the time this had come out, uh, most of the gangster films weren't seen as money-making vehicles anymore. And Coppola comes and creates what I argue is one of the greatest gangster films that elevates the genre, elevates the genre, yeah, transcends no, the genre. But it, was, it was based it on a book, it. though, right? Yeah, Mario yeah, Puzo's yeah. book. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. so, th- and also, I, I, again, I know it's part of it was mm. Joe Valachi had spoken yeah, the to Bellacci the press. Papers, so right. there was a lot of it in the thing. I'm like, yeah. oh, now, because for a long time, people were like, there was no Cosa Nostra. Right, like, right. that was the thing. Don't talk about it. And then once that started, that opened the floodgates of like, Oh, there are five families in New York and the Gambinos and all of that. And now they're like, uh, I mean, it, it's insane. That movie. It's fascinating uh, to find out how much of a network of influence those individuals actually have yeah, yeah. when they create a syndicate and they've got entire like, you know, they had Murderers Inc., which is just their right. death squad. They could send to different parts of the country. That way, there's no way to tie in victims. And you're like, Gee, I mean, this was a huge uh, you know, thing within our culture that was just just bub- bubbling below the surface. Yeah, but I'm always wondering if somebody grew up with the Sopranos, yeah, and then went back to visit The Godfather, would they be not as impressed? Because, I mean, they really psychologically go into what it's like to be a family man and mm-hmm. a killer and yeah. a thing, and your parents are hate. You know, yeah, like they re- again, it's a. It's unanswerable, but I would think it would probably have less of an impact, in my opinion. Maybe well, for some, sure. Ma- maybe, but they quote The Godfather throughout the surprise. They do? Yeah. So, so oh, it's it, part of the... So it's part of their lore, because oh, they're influenced great. by The Godfather. Therefore, it influences viewers to go back and watch The Godfather, so they can savor it as much as Tony and oh. and Paulie Walnuts and Frankie are savoring it. So, you know, those, I that's the thing with that. reading things where the FBI, after that movie came yeah. out started finding them on wiretaps talking about the movie and then ultimately like a decade beyond and stuff yeah. like that they had incorporated some of the transitional rights when you actually get made from that movie mm. they incorporated aspects <laughs> of that into their world so it turns it's like this you know 
Oh. Uh, uh, what is that? Uh, it turns in on itself, like a universe turning in on itself, a Mobius strip. Oh. And it just kind of like, so what's true and what's not anymore? And right. the, uh, it's such an interesting uh, thing. But this movie, I think, would still succeed for those individuals mm. because it's everything that the movies thereafter are patterned after. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it creates the ideology, the morality of that world. And there's so much about this movie that has legend to it. I mean, Pac- uh, Coppola saw Pacino on stage, fought for Pacino. Mm-hmm. Uh, they did not want to cast Pacino. They want to put Robert Redford in this movie. They wanted Robert Redford to play Michael Corleone, which is insane. Uh, yeah. they- That's one of the great arcs of yeah. the character, right? Yeah. Him coming oh, yeah. in, I don't want to be part of this. Mm-hmm. I'm a... Uh, uh. And, and then, then ultimately knowing he's the only one that could take over. Could do uh, it. And yeah. then, yes. Uh. Once again, it's subversive because he is a soldier in America. He's come back from a war. He's a decorated soldier. He's got his beautiful white uh, girlfriend. He's, right. he, he's, everything's laid out for him because his father kept him away from the business, mm-hmm. right? And so he said, you know, even later when they have that scene in the garden, I never wanted any of this for you. I wanted you to be senator or president, you know. And But Michael, by this point, has become disillusioned with America and its institutions and the senators. He's seen the corruption of these institutions that he was uh, trained to believe in and right. fight the for. The police force. Yeah, the police force. Yeah, all yeah, of it. Yeah. The, the judges, because they... He he owned a couple judges, exactly. Right? Yeah, so yeah. he's seeing all of it. So he's another Pesa Novant. So what he's saying is that's that's the thing is it's once again it's his first thing, but he gets corrupted by it, and that's what happens to Michael, which is why Coppola was so uh, kind of pissed off that people felt Co- uh, Michael Corleone was a hero coming out of the Godfather because oh, really? he wanted him to be a cautionary tale, which is why he made him even darker in the second one. But I think it backfires because yeah, he realizes does. that the game is fixed from all sides. Yes. So I might as well stay on this one because I know that world best, and it's my family. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it was about family. Yeah. It, but I think that motiva- motivation does help propel him. But I think ultimately it's just like once he's seen that the fact that they're all supposed to be these great institutions, so what? I'm just going to go be corrupt on this side? Right. Like it, his dad may we, want him to be senator or president, but now a mafia don has a senator or a president as a son. Yeah. Gee, that's not going to help him benefit him, so – it's, I don't want to go through all that crap. I'd rather just do this. Yeah, and initially you want to go with him. He's you know he saves his father. He he does all the right moves. Goes to Italy. Falls in love with this Apollonia girl. But then piece by piece, uh, these things happen to him that push him back into the world. Do they and pull him back harden. in? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> hey, oh. But they also harden his heart because yeah. Yeah. of how he uh, talks to well, yeah. Kay you, and you, does especially what he when does. they shut the door at the yeah. end. Yeah. Oh yeah, God. man. What a moment. Too good. Yeah. But although I I do feel like that, the killing of the police chief yeah. is, a, is a Sterling Hayden. Sterling Hayden. Hayden. Is that seat, the way it's directed, it's so elegant mm-hmm. and... Uh, it's awkward and it's, clumsy. It's everything, because you, it's Hitchcockian, because yeah. you know what's going to happen, but he yeah. doesn't know that, and you don't know it's... Uh, you don't know how it's going to happen. Oh, my God. Yeah. And just the way he drops the gun, and, yeah. and it, the, his world changed that moment, yeah. right? He finally, I yeah, jumped in yeah. with both feet. Yep. And it's perfectly awkward because it's his first kill. Yeah. Uh, outside hu- of war. Outside of war. And yeah. he has to do it up front, right to their face. Uh, he has to work up the courage. I love how Although the sound it, increases yeah. before oh, right, he right, shoots. Right. right you can hear right, the train. The subways. Yeah, the subway, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's just so elegant, that movie. I love it. Love it. That's yeah. why it's not on my list. <laughs> What's your next one? What, what do you got at two? <laughs> two is a pun from earlier, Apocalypse Now. That's my number two. Okay. Uh, do you not have it on your list? No, it's, not on not on my, it's not even on my... Um, I feel like it's a failure as a movie. Uh, it's, not, it's not even on my bubble. What? Yep. You feel it's a failure yep. as a I movie? I feel it's a failure as a movie. Yep. Oh, wow. And I it's... saw it in the movie theater at the Zegfield Theater in wow. New York City, the best screen Where in New York. Where does it fail? Well, the third act is an abomination. I just think that's... The, the Kurtz... <laughs> you feel like the Kurtz stuff is compelling to you? It's incredible. I... I think it's, <laughs> it's incredible. Way. I think it's I the natural like... trajectory of the story when you see it. It's, I love it's, this. It's Hearts of Darkness. It yeah. is. It's Hearts. It, that is the soul of this movie. I know. And I and feel like I literally and... feel like the documentary about the movie is better than the movie. Oh, that's a Hearts of Darkness is fantastic. Yes. Yeah, that it's a good doc. Would be on my li- <laughs> list as a doc. <laughs> well, uh, but yeah. So this. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can okay. explain. But this is a seventy nine. It's seventy nine or seventy eight. I know that. Yeah. I think it might be seventy nine, but and he, yeah, he. I mean, there's the whole. I don't story. think it's as good as the Deer Hunter, which came out the year before. Wow, I don't think it's. Uh, uh, yeah, I think I, it's out. There's a yes, the Wagner scene is incredible. spectacular. Yeah, yes, yeah, sure. 
I will give you that. And the <laughs> <laughs> listen to this one. I will, I will give, give, you, give you the the doors <laughs> opening is great. The opening yeah. of the doors and the uh, doors ending. The end. The end. And I will even give you. I kind of like the Playboy bunny. Weird. Ah, no, yeah, okay. yeah, well, that's you could part take of that war. Scene. That's the Bob yeah. Hope. I'm showing up in linebacker. No, I kind of liked it. I yeah. kind of liked that right. it was in the middle. The absurdity of it all. Well, I yeah. love his voiceover in that moment because he says, "Like the more they try to make it feel like home, the more they missed it." Yeah, uh, and it doesn't make any sense. And that's, and that's the highlight yeah. of the movie. But right. then, but you feel like once they go into, um, I just yeah. Well, because of the madness. what's that actor's name who he just Ooh. died? Like the assistant to Kurtz. Dennis Hopper? Uh, yeah, Dennis Hopper. Yeah. Dennis Hopper. I feel like it's all it looks like they're on drugs. It doesn't yeah. it just seems like it's a mess. And then when I saw the documentary, I'm like, yeah, I was right. This is not <laughs> But I think it, like the the second PA became a producer on that movie because so many people left the job. They're, right. <laughs> well, like, you know how Hollywood is. But it's I think crazy. the madness and the chaoticness of that final mm-hmm. act is reflective of the mindset of everybody that's been in this world, okay, yeah. and in living this war, this life. in this war, yeah, that's the thing. Vietnam was crazy; it was nuts. It was it didn't make any sense. So many crazy things were happening, and if you do any research, I watched the Ken Burns documentary; it's incredible. Yes, I saw but it. it gives you a great idea of how messed up this whole mm-hmm. thing was, and nobody knew what was what was happening, what was right, what wasn't right. All these young kids were being thrown into these into these jungles with, with the inability to understand what they were doing. So you see them kind of go crazy piece by piece, and then this idea that you're going into the heart of the jungle, which is obviously the hearts of darkness, mm-hmm. uh, but like Martin Sheen's voiceover is incredible in this movie. Oh, yeah. He's so great taking you through it. You see what happens to Lawrence Fishburne's character. You see what happens ironically to, uh, to oh God, what's that actor's name? I forget his name, but the guy who drives the boat, he gets killed by a spear. Right, right. An African-American killed by a spear in the jungle. Like it's just, it's so many levels that it's playing it. And then by the time you get to Brando, it's so insane because the tigers come out of the jungle all this stuff and it's him being in charge of the natives and then what does that mean and the line he says to him like uh you know calling someone what is it calling someone or, or you know convicting someone of something here in the jungle is in war is the same thing as handing out speeding tickets at the Indy 500 it's brilliant dialogue and John Milius wrote this thing there's so much about it through the whole film that just it it has statements about the military statements mm-hmm. about the war, statements about our society. There's so much going through it. If it doesn't work for you, I respect that, Wayne. But I love it when they get to the jungle because it is. Uh, you both do. Is, is, yeah, well, I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I don't think that if the movie ended a different way, I wouldn't enjoy yeah. it as much. He has to die. He has right, to die. Right, right. But he also needs to descend into hell. He yes. needs to go through Dante and just go mm-hmm. through every the ring. circles. Yeah, yeah, the right. Okay, and, it's, I, and he ends up being saved at the end. Uh, when he could have been lost numerous times throughout the whole film, mm-hmm. and he ends up getting saved for what happens. So, uh, but you know, not on Wayne's list. All right. So, what do you got what's two? your number two? Well, this one is not going to be on anyone's probably bubble <laughs> oh or God, list. This is insane. But this is from the same year. <laughs> okay. That Apocalypse Now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> which is 1970. I think it's 79. All I right. hope it's not 78. But um, it's a comedy because I'm in the, and it's my favorite. Writer director in the history of Hollywood. Okay, the history of Hollywood, <clears throat> mind you. My, Woody Allen is his name. Oh no! Yes, I know he's. Uh, uh, I know everyone. Wayne. I, guess. I know he's. It's been. It's been eighteen years. He's still married to the same daughter. That guy. <laughs> Yeah, but you lived through it. It's different. <laughs> it is different. It's different. It is different. It's different. It is different. I will give you that. It's like me with You're, Mel Gibson. Yeah. Just yeah. like, yeah, I, I, I understand. But at the same time, it's like, I... Braveheart. Yeah. Braveheart and Lethal, Lethal Weapon. Weapon. Yes, yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah. man... Shane Black. I got it. Yeah. Doesn't appreciate my enjoyment of those movies. Yeah. I, I agree it's a generational thing. I agree it's a generational thing. But I, the movie's called Manhattan. Oh, good. I'm glad you chose that one. What's that, Annie? I'm so glad you chose that over Annie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Annie yeah, Hall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Manhattan is just <sighs> a brilliant movie. Same cinematographer as The, yep. God, uh, the Godfather, yep. Gordon, Gordon Willis. Willis. Mm-hmm. Black and white. Again, he's a 42-year-old guy. She's 17. Yep. I get that it's all weird now, but <laughs> I will tell you, at the time, it was nominated for Best Picture. Um, it lost the screenplay to the guy who wrote Breaking Away. Mm-hmm. Just a little callback. And then, but it, I, it's Annie Hall without any of the tricks. There's no cartoons. Mm-hmm. There's no subtitles. Mm-hmm. There's no split screen. There's he no doesn't lobsters. talk to the camera. Yeah. There's the, it's, it's incredible. And the, the jokes in it are, 
are great, and it's I, I love it. I love everything about it. It's my favorite Woody Allen movie, and I know it's hard. It's hard. I know. And I know it's impossible for someone knowing Woody Allen's history to see that film and not be yeah. See two wow. Mo- see two things going on at the yeah, same he time. He made a movie about himself and put right, it out. Right, like right, told right. us yeah. I totally, fifteen years before we found right, out. So I, I don't want to like try to convince you, no. but I'm just saying at the time, and there was a. A critic in New York called Andrew Saris, who wrote for the um, uh, Village Voice, one of the creators of what was the uh, what, the what? what you, no, no, no the, in the sixties, mm-hmm. the uh, when they would talk about a direct auteur, the oh, auteur. He's one okay. of the creators of the auteur theory. The auteur theory, okay, yeah. And he called at the time Manhattan the best movie of the seventies. I mm. mean, it was so. It's just everything I like about seventies. It's smart. No, it's I mean, elevated. It's it's come up on the show before. We yes, did, yeah, we did a show about. Uh, oh, what'd you do? Movies with the city in the title. Yep, and oh. I think Manhattan was on his list. Yeah, it was, it on, was? in my top three or four. Did you get yeah. blowback? Did you what? No, yeah. blowback. No, he did not get. No, I you're, did fine. Not. you're fine. You're fine. Don't worry about it. On the thing, did the internet go in? No, 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 because it, you know, I think people. I understand. love Manhattan. People I love the Gershwin separation. music. Yeah. Uh, every every almost every shot is like a postcard yep. in that movie. Yep. Yeah, and the ending is. Like we were talking about earlier. Yeah. He doesn't get the girl. I know it seems weird. Like, oh, he doesn't get the 17 year old, but he doesn't. He fi- he realizes, oh, I'm not. In a, I might be like, and she's. It's a very Charlie Chaplin esque ending. Yeah. It's it's incredible. I was deluded to think. I was deluded because I thought that the whole thing happens through the window and you don't hear their interaction, but you do hear their interaction. You're just watching it through the door, the window door, and oh. you're watching them uh, have this conversation but he learns the lesson he understands what what happened i think what happens at the end of when harry met sally has some homages to this scene as well in manhattan that running through the streets to get to the person you want to get the to difference yeah no i know but i'm saying it's an homage i don't say it is well there's the a lot thing. yeah how many romantic comedies is somebody running at the end that's like an it's well like, now it's almost a trope yeah now, now. Uh, but i'm saying back then when it came out anyway um, well the, but, Let's move on from Manhattan, but I just I that's my number two, okay. almost my number one. Listen, I, uh, well, we I know what your uh, number one. We is all know now. what yeah. our number well, one. Well, I'll yeah. de- I'll, I'll decide when we move on. For God's sakes, when we slow I down. Love it. I want to talk it. about Manhattan just a little bit more because I agree. I love that you had the guts to put it on there. I had to take it off. I wanted to put it on, but the you Woody did? Allen stuff. I just it's hard. I couldn't it's do difficult. it. It's but difficult. Manhattan is my favorite Woody Allen film, bar none. What the dialogue, the, my... the way it frame, he f- shoots New York, the conversations that they have, the interactions that they go through. You're right. It takes all that bullshit out of Annie Hall, and it, it gives you what you actually could have in a film like this. It is. It's. I don't think Woody's ever topped this film. I think maybe he spent the rest of his life chasing this film. I don't think he's ever come. He close doesn't to even it. like the films. So yeah, and that's, that's what's so yeah, ironic. Really? That's no. what's so ironic. He does not like the. Film I wouldn't at all. like it either if I couldn't re- match anything. Yeah. I made afterwards. Well, to I it, think so. it's more so that he can't believe his subconscious allowed him to put that out into the world. <laughs> maybe that's why he doesn't like it. It's his most honest movie. Right. Well, I I actually think, <laughs> I think also I, what it has to say about romance. It's and, my and favorite story. movie of his. Again, yeah. he's my favorite writer director. Mm-hmm. But I do think maybe Crimes and Misdemeanors is a better movie. Oh, you like that one, huh? Yeah, yeah that's I just a good think one. it's insane that movie. But again, we're splitting hairs. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely in the canon. But I, mean, I love that you. Li- I didn't know you were oh, that liked it. I love Manhattan. The, the Crimes and Misdemeanors thing is so interesting too. I mean, who else would put a story <laughs> about a guy defecating on a tied up woman in his like? It's so brilliant. And Woody's reaction. Oh, Oh my god! Oh my god! Like the rabbi is going blind. Yeah, the rabbi's going I mean, blind. It's insane. <laughs> it's so. It's. I love. I love. I love Woody. Woody Allen is my again. Yeah. And it's really sad. It's really sad mm-hmm. that I, yeah. someone cannot watch that movie through the eyes that I did in 1970. And here's the thing. And a quick thing before we get yeah. to number one. Again, I felt like it's. If you go back, I feel like there's no reviews that bring up it's weird that no. he's going at anything mm-hmm. in the same way that in Animal House, 78, yeah. there's a scene where the girl's passed out right. and there's a devil. Well, yeah. It, yeah, it was fine for a younger woman and an older man. No, no, no. I'm talking about raping a girl who's oh, yeah. unconscious. She's 15. But I'm saying She's sexual 15. interaction was like that was understood, whereas the, the Harold and Maude... It's like, what are you doing with this old woman? But right. if the roles were reversed, be like, 
Yeah, that happens. Oh, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Huh? So I think it was yeah. just it's more societally. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. I have two movies on my. You do. I thought about that earlier, but I didn't want to bring it up because I didn't want you to feel subconscious about it. Like maybe because <laughs> you did on the bottom of mine. Are you saying this... I should be hanging out at middle schools? <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> Uh, or it could be the other. Maybe you should be hanging out in retirement homes. Oh, okay. Okay. Maybe okay. It's, uh, you view yourself yeah, as the yeah, young yeah, one yeah, going, yeah, yeah. I like I'm these the older. I'm the kid in it. I'm the kid. I yeah, like that's it. what I assumed because you were a kid when you saw them. So you're right. Thanks right. for older chicks when he was younger. <laughs> I'm working something out. Right. I'm working yeah. something out. I'm working, right. out, I'm working out my own So thing. was Woody. And we're all, the, you know, you guys are the happier <laughs> for it. I know. And, and I saw Manhattan before all this stuff broke. You which did. Which is why I still revere it because it just was incredible. So, all right. So then our number ones are, is it the same? Well, no. He's. Oh, what's your. Yeah, it no, 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 doesn't no, matter. It doesn't work. matter. I think it's all the same, right? Or to ours are the same, Was right? that his no. number two? Was Manhattan your number yes. two? Yes, Manhattan's okay. number two. Yeah, uh, Godfather, part God, two. Part two. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, his, I already know what his is because it was a punt from yeah, earlier. it is a punt from earlier. So you so have not, neither you didn't Godfather. Put either of the Godfathers are, no. I just, I just feel like it's stupid to have them on their list. Like, everyone loves those movies. Oh, so you're really you're not even doing this. This, this isn't called the top ten seventies. I love films it. I love it. That, I love it. Are not First of all, <laughs> you just went hipster. If, if you I, just went hipster. I so everybody. Dead. I don't like that. Pish posh, man. You know what the best movie the seventies was? Everyone says that. Well, first of all, but I feel like The Godfather isn't even in a list about best movies of the seventies. It's a list about the greatest movies of all time. All right, yeah. it is. But they. Uh, yeah. All right, we can talk about it. I knew you guys would have it. I didn't know you were going to have both of them. It's because to me it I, says top movies of the seventies. Yeah, I, I, when I think of seventies movies, you're like, well, it's Godfather and Godfather Two. That was when I, you I wouldn't do what list. I did earlier with all that jazz and cabaret. Yes. You wouldn't put them. To- yes, if they weren't both so exceedingly amazing yes. on their own. Okay, you, and, and one, you agree with that also. And one is distinctly better than yeah. the other one. Yes, two to me is the far superior. Absolutely. That's, wow, it, that's where we're going to disagree. <laughs> that that yeah. is where we're going to really? disagree. Yes, wow. one and I've two. seen them both. I've seen them both. <laughs> so so <I> have I. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I like that I'm saying those. it like it's. Uh, <laughs> guys, I've seen both of them. Did you also see the second one in the theater? Yes. Oh. I am all about seeing these movies yeah. in the theater. Yeah. Um, do you go see yeah. them now? Do you go see them now? Yes. The yeah. All the so time. Any, any movie before 1980, I like to see in a movie theater yeah. if I can. The if Egyptian can. and the Arrow are just. Yeah, I even go to the New Beverly. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, New yeah, Beverly. Yeah, yeah, right yeah. down the street. Yeah. I, Is anything going in the silent movie? No. I, think, no. I don't know. You know, I used over. to have my own film festival, guys. Over and there? That's, yeah, at the Silent Movie Theater. Oh. Yeah, the Wayne Fetterman International Film Festival. <laughs> we'll talk about it another time. So I, I wish we could give a plug for it, you know? Maybe we set up. We should have set up a top no. ten event at the Wayne Fetterman International oh, Film Festival. Oh, my God. Yeah, I did I, it for five years. Then. What? Yeah, they still do it in New York. It's really? a long... Read my Wikipedia. I can't imagine... That list. I'm a little worried about that list. With no, it's not, it's not. I don't curate the movies. Oh, I, good. I mean, uh, no, that's cool. I understand. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Okay, but it's a. It, that's a sidebar. That so let's talk bar. about Godfather Two. Tell me Godfather why it's better 2. than Godfather One because the F word. No. <laughs> I I think it's the scope of the story. Yeah. I think it's the treatment of the characters because they feel more lived in and you know them. And the this fact- is the business we choose. Yeah. The. Is that the line? The betrayal at the end it's and the, then the retribution juice. for that betrayal is so visceral and real because right. you already know the characters mm-hmm, so well mm-hmm. that to me it just resonated more deeply than the first one. Not to say that I'm not besmirching the first of one. Course, number two. Of course, of course. But the, this movie to me just it encapsulates A, so much of the 70s to me when I go back and think of films that came out in that decade, but yeah. B... Uh, crime uh, dramas and dramas in general, um, just family interconnectivity, the corruption of power and greed and money and just everything is summated so beautifully. And plus the flashbacks, usually I would hate that mm-hmm. and more often than not. And this one just, it, it so perfectly sum- summates like, uh, oh, here's what young Corleone was like. And this is how they actually got to power. And they're just flashing back and filling in aspects of the story that you wouldn't traditionally do in a second one. You're going back to give a backstory to a character that's not going to be in this movie. Yeah. Like That's it's a just, good point. I, That's a good yeah, point. Yeah, I, I just liked it for all the choices that they made across the board because it's so easy to fail yeah. when you make the two, uh, the two, the second. Of course. Well, you, you have Pacino and De Niro at the top of their games as actors in this film. Yep. You have Duvall's character be, being in the situation where it's getting pushed out of the family. Mm-hmm. You have more John Cazale stuff, which you really didn't get a lot of in Godfather other than the, right. him being like someone's bitch the whole time. This film 
you get more character, more development. He's got a wife that mes- that emasculates him. He's got he tries to find some kind of footing in this world because he feels passed over. He makes all these decisions that in the end ultimately bite him because in the end his brother did love him. He just showed it to him in different ways, and uh, but they were in ways that he didn't understand. Yeah. And the tragedy that that leads to, right? The stuff with Connie. Connie becoming, the, of course, in a reaction to her husband being killed at the end of the first one, becoming this rich, uh, you know, judgmental, flighty, doesn't give a mm-hmm, crap, mm-hmm. You're spoiled little rich girl, and at the end comes back and understands what she needs to do for the family. All of that, and you juxtapose that with going back in time for everything that happens with, with Vito, how he's constructed, what he needs to do. So you get the idea of why he was so revered. And in fact... That's the struggle is Michael trying to be like his father and he can't because it's not in his, is in his emotional makeup mm. to be his father. Not his nature. Not his nature, yeah, right? Yeah, and when yeah. he has that conversation with his mom, right, he says, well, how come father, how come everybody love dad? Why can't I do blah, blah, blah? And it's because Michael doesn't have it within him to be that way. And so that when he has that fight with Kay near the end where he finds that she aborted their child without his permission. Yeah. That is Ouch. And then he slaps her, which uh, Diane Keaton said he really did slap her. Uh, right, for, right. You know, that kind of you, – you, Right, that was yeah, actually a controversial visceral. thing. Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's such a powerfully uh, incredible movie about immigration as well, You mm-hmm. know, about what can happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that shot of do. him yeah, coming on the boat, right? Yeah, That's in that, that movie, right? Yeah. 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 The kid singing is looking at yeah, the yeah. Statue of Liberty in the window. All of that – you just it's all of it like you see both their rises and and what it leads to in the end and i think it's a fantastic film and i think it were the scope i do think and it of is course, a fantastic of course strasburg of course yeah. strasburg as yes, well yes lee strasburg and my favorite scene in miami and that and you think it's going to be cuz you see all these big castles on yeah. my these estates with the security and you see him in this little like <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's what real money does. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't. He knows he doesn't need to flaunt. He's Meyer yeah. Lansky. It's just yeah. like the brains behind the yeah. operation. Just like, listen, we can play the percentages, and we don't have to get our hands wet, yeah. our hands dirty, or whatever the case is. Oh yeah. my god! And the wife and the whole thing. Isn't yeah. there like a football game? Yeah, on? Notre Dame's playing. Yeah, is that yeah, it? Yeah, There's yeah. a Notre. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Don't get me wrong. I don't. Yeah, I love it. I love the. You Godfather just think it's over, been over talked? No, I feel like the Godfather's slightly better. As a no, no, oh, I, I, I want to hear regards to lists. I want to hear that. I just say a beginning, middle, end movie. Mm-hmm. I feel like the arc of that movie is bad. Like it's more successful for me. For me, I feel okay. like Godfather Two is way more ambitious yes. than Godfather, and I like that. I love Godfather Two, but I just feel like for me, and I just feel like the Godfather, the sim- is more was more satisfying for me than Godfather Two, okay. and it might be because. Maybe there were some things that you're talking about that I missed oh. because of you know each. Mm-hmm. Well, Michael's yeah. not redeemed at the yeah, end of two, yeah, where yeah. he has kind of redeemed at one. At the end of one, even though he's mean, you still go with him that he's going to take care of the family now. But at the end, in two, he's almost alienated the entire family. Oh yes, when he's sitting there by himself, <sighs> that's that's it. That's the rest of it. That's the course right, of his life. Right, right. I am alone. I can. They may be family, but I can't trust anyone. Yeah. And I feel like these, are, those movies, are more operatic in a way sure. than oh, than Star, Star Wars. I t- I might be wrong about that, but mm. I think so. I think in in terms of what an opera would be written about, yes. I mean, I know it's like Italian, a, a double crossing, right. powerful family, right. and yeah, that'd be that's operatic in tone. <laughs> yeah, and tragic, and but you have a in Star Wars, you have a a, a father figure that gets no. killed and sacrificed for the son to live. Oh, you mean in the whole thing? Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah, in the first right. movie. In the yeah. first movie, Kenobi is killed. Right. Kenobi is killed. That's yeah. the father figure for Luke. Luke, be, Uncle Ben was never his father in in his mind. Uh, Luke, uh, hey, you don't have Kenobi. to yell at me. Uh, I'm just. <laughs> I mean, Uncle Owen rather is not his father. You know, <laughs> it's Ben. And then what happens? I mean, him and his sister. The stuff. What a great decade yeah. Yeah. for yeah. movies, Absolutely. right? Phenomenal. This has so, been f- so fun talking about these. So, things. what's your number one, Wayne? It's we talked about it. it's Jaws. 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 Oh, all right, let's talk about it. Yeah. Oh. Love Is that. that on everyone's list? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah It's yeah. on everyone's list. Yeah, it's yeah. my five. Um, Where's it at for you, John? It's, uh, sorry. Let me look here. Okay. Have? Can you please pay attention? <laughs> we have one wait. thing to do. I We're making a list. Wait. Well, he's the only one that actually four. has two things to do with <laughs> oh, this does. one today. It's my number four. Four. Okay. So yeah. it's, uh, it's, so, uh, it's yeah. my number one. It's my number one. And <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I think it's the movie I've seen more than... All of yeah. I think I've seen that movie more than all of these outside of Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, you've seen Star Wars more. Yeah, I've seen what Star Wars you, more than Jaws, but I mean, I've seen Jaws a lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Jaws to me is pretty close to a perfect. It's my favorite Spielberg movie, and the yeah. story that 
the fact that the shark wouldn't work ended up making the movie so much better yeah. and made him get final cut in any movie he ever did after that. Mm-hmm. I, and it set up the summer blockbuster. Set, of yeah. course. So that now is a thing that every person in this country knows about and probably across the world as well. Yep. And, and has my favorite scene. My favorite scene in the movie, hands down, is... The USS Indianapolis? No. Oh. Which one? Need a no. bigger boat? No. <laughs> uh, no. Are we going to keep guessing? This is my favorite scene. Hands down. I feel there's nothing wow. in the movie wow. close to this scene. And I love both those scenes. Yeah, is it when he drags the nails across the chalkboard and he has a conversation with the... <laughs> no. That's... <laughs> <laughs> Robert Shaw. It's when Alex Kittner, an innocent boy oh, on a raft, gets oh. eaten alive by a shark. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is. If you think about what you're allowed to do in a movie, yeah. to have a boy, innocent, didn't do anything, eaten alive, and the way that, I mean, that the way that he composed that, you're like, what is even happening? Like, yeah. is that the fin? I don't even know what's going on. It's like a circle thing, and then. The crazy shot, the whole, the setup of that with Tippet, I think is the mm-hmm. name of the dog. I might be having that wrong. And suddenly the dog's gone yeah. and people are going in the water and the, there's a, like a song in the background. And, well, and then you sh- see the mom looking around, looking yeah. for a child in the yeah. water. Well, but no, before that, before oh, okay. just the setup and oh, then the, the attack and yeah. the. The mu- and how fast it happens. It's not like they mess around a lot. They show, no. do, 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 and all of a sudden, oh, right. Well, what? and the best part is they don't. You don't see it. Oh, like, you see a lot. You nah, see that kid you get see, pulled down. Yeah, we see it in the. But back. the way that you would see it today is there'd be an underwater shot, and you'd come up. Oh, and oh see yeah, it yeah, from yeah. Afar You see and more like, in that. You'd be surprised how much you see in that. It's like you see him being pulled down by his arm, and well, you see him, his arm and body flip <laughs> over with the fin. You see the blood coming out as right behind the people as they're running out of the water. But, oh, but and, you don't see it up close. Yeah, no, don't and see you it don't know. Like you can speculate as to what it is, but you don't know what it is. You don't know exactly how yeah. it's being yeah. eaten alive. This is a horror film masquerading as an inc- as a no, it's as two, a regular film. It's two films absolutely, in one. Absolutely, yeah. it's a horror film in the beginning and then an adventure. Yes, film. Yes, absolutely. And I, I <laughs> and then of course the push dolly push mm-hmm. in. Oh yeah, the rack yeah, focus. The yeah. rack is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah, yeah they focus, yeah. they stole from Hitchcock. And yes. I just thought it was <laughs> incredible. It's just incredible what that movie is and. I have to say, my let me tell you the one thing I don't like about that movie. Okay. There's some music in the second half that I don't like, this sort of adventure sound. What? Like, you don't like that? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Because right, like, right when they go through the shark's mouth, they're... And, and, and then when they shoot the three barrels and they're chasing the shark, yeah. Yeah, you hear I the music it, kicking. You I, don't I like that. That's when it turns into an action film. Oh, I, I find it score. too Swiss Family Robin. Again, oh, I know... and. And the weird thing is, <laughs> the irony of my statement is, I feel like that score is, if not the greatest score, certainly in the top five scores ever yeah. composed. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's well, right one of the most iconic. Gone with the wind. I mean, it is insane. Like, don't, don't, don't. I mean, mm-hmm. so to <sighs> say, to criticize the music in a score that's the greatest, amongst the greatest of all time is... That's me. I'm wow. full of contradictions. We learned that today. <laughs> we, I Welcome like to the human experience of the top ten. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Ex- but at the same time, <laughs> that that problem of juxtaposition for you didn't hold it back from being number one on your list. Oh, yeah. no, that's a small. I mean, yeah, I'm it is. I think it's almost a perfect movie. I mean, Just the fact that they go to the Indianapolis, and that's where I learned about the USS oh, Indianapolis yeah. from that, and and like the terror of that and reading accounts thereafter yeah. and of course it would drive someone like Shaw to drink and to yeah, just says a nutter to, to uh, share that story and living through it I can't even imagine what that turns that and even into. the way they reveal it with the tattoo yeah and he realizes it mm-hmm. and uh. and Richard Dreyfus knows about it yeah. he's a uh, what do they call what, are they, what is he he's called? a marine biologist yeah, marine biologist right. so, yeah. so he would have naturally studied this as an right. interesting he's thing he's shocked and Brody has no yeah. idea <laughs> Yeah. I think I, someone told me because I've never read the book, but in the book, Dreyfus's character and uh, uh, Brody's wife yes. have an affair. Yeah, yeah that's, like, fair. that's true. Oh, yeah. that's weird. Yeah, Which yeah. I'm I, glad they kept out. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah that, that was a good. Cause cause that was a good. It's a weird. Yeah, and I can the weird the thing is the guy who wrote the movie, uh, Peter, Carl, Peter Benchley. No, he wrote the book, right? But the movie, oh, this, yes. is this guy uh, Carl Gottlieb? Gottlieb, yes. It's like this insane. It's like a comedy guy wrote for the Smothers Brothers, like that. He got that gig, and it's. 
I don't know. Every, it was just that was to me whatever fairy dust or angel mm-hmm. dust was yeah. like over that production. Yeah. I mean, as bad as everything went, it couldn't have gone better. Yeah. Yeah, the final results are timeless. Yeah. Happy accidents. Yeah. Really the greatest example of a happy accident. It established Spielberg for the rest of his career, and people use that technique, that horror technique of hiding the uh, a- of hiding the uh, a creature until certain moments numerous times. The thing does that. Alien does that. Mm-hmm. Uh, right, you know, right. So many yeah. horror films do you that as build we the go forward. Yeah, you also the... keeps the budget down. It, you know yes, I mean? it does. Yes, so, it does. It's a win-win. Right. I don't know. Why do you like Jaws? Enough about me. Just okay. for all those things, like it, I think it is when we did our Spielberg. I think it was my number one Spielberg oh, it was? movie. Yeah. Was it yours as well? No, mine's always going to be Schindler's List. Just from just because it's it is his greatest film ever made. So uh, I have a hard time not putting it number mm-hmm. one. If yeah. you call me top ten favorite Spielberg films, that's a different list for me. Top ten Spielberg films is something else. Schindler's so, okay. List. Well, if I'm not okay, maybe I'm making a mistake. Mm-hmm. But remember, we were talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. Mel Brooks having two movies come out in the same oh, year. Yeah. Didn't he have Schindler's List and Jurassic Park in the same yes, year? Yes, yes. 93? 93. That's a good year for yeah. a director. And I'm a just talking of- about years like that. I mean, yeah. yeah, that's pretty incredible. It was a very good year. Yeah, a lot of people And think- also, Godfather 2, 74, mm-hmm. he had the conversation, which Conversa- is not one of his best, yes. but certainly a... It's a good movie. It's you a damn think, good We movie. all agree it's a good yeah. movie, right? Yeah, yeah okay. And it, it resonates now with lots, and you, people's loss of privacy and whatnot. Oh yeah, yeah and, say, and paranoia. Checking in on people, yeah. I put tape over the camera on my laptop just in case. You do? It's, it's just a piece does. of scotch tape, but I did because I read enough from counsel. Like, look, if they want to get in your laptop and, and watch you, they could do it at any time. I was like, yeah. well... At least make it frustrating for them if they are trying to do it. <laughs> so it's clear scotch tape wouldn't do much, right? Uh, it's cloudy unless you press it really hard. Oh. So I just lightly put it over. It stays cloudy. They can't see me. Mm. I mean, you could put a piece of duct see tape figures. or something, but I don't want to ruin it. Right. Is Although, that like the Doris Day effect? Like a very gossy... Oh, so I look good? Yeah, you, you know look what I mean? good. <laughs> like that Oprah lighting? Yeah, yeah. The Barbara Streisand <laughs> the lighting? The Barbara Streisand lighting. Yeah. That's what it is. The glamour shot? <laughs> yeah. It's not oh, he looks amazing. He's amazing. Look at this guy. <laughs> never seen such a handsome man masturbate before. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> Incredible footage. Uh, <laughs> they better uh, hope I, not, I don't get scared of that porn. I'm going to... <laughs> make well, what do we list. do? Do we do a wrap up at the end? Well, I, this has got to be over, right? Yeah, we're right, done. Right, 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 right. Yeah. I think. I, I, I mean, I'm sorry you have to run, Wayne. Yeah, no, I, I don't. I know, but I just. I never get... had a guest just in the show. All right, we're finished, right? He's been dictating the whole show. I love it. Right, well, I'm a terrible person. He's <laughs> <laughs> been just in like... a million things. I just want you to start saying that now. <laughs> when we're on the court and a new guy shows up, oh, what do you win? A million stuff. A million things. A million things. A million things. I'm sorry. I apologize. Have you seen? Have you heard me on the top ten show? I was on that. I was I, on trust it. me, I've been on everything. <laughs> no, for me, I think uh, the beginning is what sells the film to me. It, it and to me, it's Spielberg coming out of Duel. You know, he's a uh, Duel was just a uh, Duel's essentially Wait, uh, Jaws on Land, Sugarland Express. Well, no, but I'm saying like this oh, idea yeah, yeah, of yeah. the horror. Like he, yeah. I think he was working out Jaws as he was doing Duel. Uh, this mm. is in essence what he's going yeah. to do, and you see it happening. Right, this unknowable thing that is a killing force. You cannot reason with it. You cannot reckon with it. It will destroy you mm-hmm. unless you kill it first. And so you see all of it. But then the ending is so perfect. Who would have thought the last guy to do this, the most scared guy right. on the on the ship, the New York cop, the New York yeah, cop, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. right, <laughs> hanging off the thing on the edge, yeah. you know, and the way Robert Shaw dies, there's, n- I've never watched that movie and not have it break me in half when I see it because of his scream yeah. when he gets bit, because the scream is more than just I'm dying. The scream is also. God damn it, I survived the Indianapolis just to get yeah. killed by a shark anyway. The only years thing later. that I'm truly terrified right, of. Right, right. On my own boat. With yeah. the with the uh, uh, um, lifesavers on which he said he was never going to wear again. Remember? He says, oh, I'll never yeah. wear a life jacket again. But then he puts it on anyway right before it all happens. So it's just like, and what and what makes him let go? It's the, uh, the uh, uh, w- w- those tanks that he was bitching right, about. Right. It's karma, their way of getting him back. Right. So there's so much involved there's in the film so that's much. brilliant. So I agree with Can you. Can I say another Spielberg scene in that sure, movie that sure. I love is the first time they hook the shark and it's just the... 
Yes. Oh, yeah, this little click. <laughs> and is... he starts the oh my, he starts to strap in. Yeah. Oh my, it's like it, that's everything in filmmaking to me. Yeah. Yeah. Just like you see it as the audience, and they're in the background, have no idea, and right. he's just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you should do foley work that was really <laughs> good, good. Was i believe that i was like we've got to do there's only so many foley artists that, in the world a, a, a rod uh well wayne was right now is the end of the show where we compile yeah, now we this hash, yeah. list which we hash this thing out which is going to be really intense considering wayne it won't be that hard almost none of our films on his list so this is going to be an interesting combination uh to put together uh let us see all right i will what do we so uh, right we both now. have godfather 2 at number one Right? Yes, but technically, we all three have Jaws in our top oh five. Oh, my God, we do. So our two number ones and his non-placement <laughs> right. means... But again, I feel like my non-placement was just a trick. I didn't know this was going to be voted on at the end and it would hurt it. I have uh, no problem if you want to put Godfather 2 as number the, the, one no, yeah, I'm just and Jaws as number the two. The way we've done the show yeah. usually in the past is we would honor the Jaws because right. all three of us have it and it's that high. It's yeah. the only one. That is that high for all three of us on a list. Way to go, Wayne. All right, so we'll put Jaws at number Jaws one. Jaws is I guess. number one. Godfather 2. Yes. Then is number, number two. two. Two, yes. Absolutely. Godfather's number three. Well, I have Apocalypse Now at number two. Where do you have it at? Four. I don't even have it on my bubble. Yeah. What do you, what do you, what you have, have next? You have Manhattan? Yeah, it's not going to be it's on the list. No, no it'll make it eventually. Yeah. Not in the top ten, probably. Uh, well, no, it will, because it's that high. So basically, we're doing the same thing as you have, you have Godfather where, I'm sorry? Three. That means Godfather charts higher between the two of us. Okay, Godfather then number three. I agree with that. I like this list. I like it. Okay. That's what we're trying to just find. The, the, yes, the of only course. way to fairly do is find commonalities. Do, yeah, do, yeah, do yeah. we have anything that's all three of us together? Uh, Alien, I think, right? No. 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 In no Star I like Wars, Aliens. No, right? And I have a problem with the cat. Do you remember oh, that? That's right. Yeah, yeah your issue with Jonesy. That's yeah. right. So I have Star Wars at three, but you have Apocalypse now at two. Yeah. You have Manhattan two. What do you have at three, Mr. Fetterman? The Exorcist on no one's list. No one has. <laughs> okay. Um, I think we have to put Wayne's two here at Manhattan. We think we no, have to. no, no, no. It's that, that high on his list. That's no, how it no, works. No, 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 no. Well, because yeah. otherwise we're going to get a couple of hours in that are common because they're higher in common. Yeah, let's do that. Two. Well, let's do that. Would you rather honor obviously Manhattan or Exorcist higher? Manhattan, I'm assuming. So yeah, Manhattan higher, will end up higher. at number four. Oh, okay. okay, that's yeah. ridiculous. I don't like the way you guys are putting this list together. <laughs> it this benefits is, you. I get it, but I don't. I, I'm I. I honor fairness way above personal glory. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, that's fair, but we're about to go, hey, hey what do you want next? Apocalypse Now? Yes. Bing, bang, boom, done. Okay. So I just yeah. cut you out of the process. I don't there care. I, I, <laughs> Apocalypse Now, people love that movie. Uh, okay. So then where, where are we at now? Five or six? Uh, number six. Okay. So do we go with one of ours, or do we go with one of Wayne's? No. Well, Wayne, what's your next high, highest Exorcist. commonality? Because oh. I have Star Wars at three. Where do you have it? Star Wars is my number one, two, three, four, five, six. And it's eight. It's on all of our lists. Oh. Oh. Star Wars New Hope is on yeah. our list? Yes. Oh. Not a New Hope, but Star Wars. I'm sorry, Star Wars. <laughs> yes. Star Wars. Yeah, so right. we may even put Star Wars, because that's on well, all of our lists. Star Wars above Manhattan, then. Yeah, it should be. So right. Star Wars is four. Manhattan okay. is five. Okay. Pop Apocalypse Now is six. <sighs> all right, fine. It happened. God damn it. Uh, God damn it. Um, I have Alien next. Oh, is that another one? We all have that one, right? No, he doesn't oh, have, don't have that. No, don't like the uh, cat. But we I, have it, so we should put that next. I think. Yeah, two. Yes. You have, well, what do you, where do you? I have Alien at eight. You have it where? I have it uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, put Alien. Five. In there. Well, yeah, but you have all the presidents where four. I had that at four. Yes, I have that at six, which oh, okay. means it rates higher collectively. Okay. Okay. And then I guess then Alien would be after that. Okay. okay. I like it. What I are we like up it. to now? I think that's then, This is seven and eight, so we got nine and ten left. Okay. Yeah, I think there's none, no more on my list, so keep going. I would think... Uh, do you have Rocky, Superman, Taxi Driver, or Patton left on your list? Zero. Yeah. And I think I don't have any of yours. What do you have left on your list, Wayne? Harold and Maud. Well, you have Exorcist, don't you? Well, did well, we put that on it? Wait, wait. The Exorcist, Harold and Maud. I'm yeah. sorry. All that jazz. The having Exorcist to wait goes, and Bad News Bears. Mm. The Exorcist goes next because that was okay. your three? Yep. Man, okay. that was very high. All right, so we have one left. Who has the highest one left? Well, I have, you I know, have a seven. Same thing, seven, Rocky. You got anything higher I'll than seven? I'll go with Rocky. 
No, no. You got your six through? Yeah, what's well, your no, one? I did. I mean, actually, that's not true. I you did have Blazing Saddles at six. I beat this by one. But I, but also, I did the Blazing Saddles like a double 1974 tribute. Yeah, but that was your choice, and we didn't yeah. really talk about Young Frankenstein. I'd be happy with Blazing Saddles because the chart's higher. So Rocky doesn't make it at all? No. Or Superman or Text Over Pat. All right. I would, I would rather vote for Rocky. What do you, what do you have? I'd rather have? vote for Rocky. What do you have? Chinatown. Oh. Uh, geez, one Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Uh, yeah. Clockwork Orange. Like... Mm. If you guys really want to fight for between, because now I'm thinking more iconic. Yes, Rocky. Yeah. Yes, uh, I would fight for Rocky. I mean, mine is very personal. But when I yeah. heard these arguments and stuff, I would go more well, for I, Rocky I don't... or Chinatown. Um, here, or, pick or... a number, one or two, Wayne. Just keep it in your head. Keep it in your head. <laughs> okay. Pick a number. Okay. It's done. Say it aloud. One. One. One, okay, it's yours. You win. Rocky. Rocky it is. Nice. Oh, okay. hey See, easy. It was done. Done. He's so a random observer. We have vetted interests. It's how it works. We're not vetted, but... Guys, anyway. thank you so much. Well, now we count down the list for the yeah, people. Wait, let us dictate the show. And then you'll and then get then your... We're going to give you a off. We're Guys, gonna... it's been a lot of fun. We'll see you next week on <laughs> Top Ten. <laughs> you got an Uber to catch? <laughs> Good to see you. Buddy. I don't have anything. I'm not doing anything. Uh, All right, hold well, on. He's going to bang on I'm a table. Bang. And, oh, right. you gotta oh I yeah. can't wait give for Give me that this, sweet, right? sweet falsetto, my yes, friend. Sir. The Top Ten 70s movies, yeah. At number 10. Rocky. At number 9. The Exorcist. At number 8. <laughs> That's fantastic. Alien. At number seven. All the President's Men. At number six. Apocalypse Now. At number five. Manhattan. At number four. Star Wars. At number three. Godfather. At number two. The Godfather Part Two. And the number one film in the 1970s is... Jaws. Boom. Dun, 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 dun. And by the way, quick thing: if I'm not yeah. mistaken, I think Godfather is part two. Is the first time there was ever a part two of a movie. Really? It was called Part Two. Oh, oh specifically called Part Two. Yeah, wow, that's certainly. Possible. Or is it Godfather Two? It's Godfather it's Two. Go- yeah. Or is it? It's not Part Two. Oh no, it's the Godfather Part Two. It is Part yeah. Two. Yeah. I yeah. believe that is the first time. Can you think of anything just in your vast knowledge? Because obviously no. there were sequels. There's a Thin Man. Sure. There's a, you Here's know. another question: Has there was that the first second part to be nominated for Best Picture? Oh, oh, prob- Well, yes. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously, I think in the Bells of Saint Mary and Going My Way were both nominated, oh, yeah. but those are same character right, right. sequel. But okay. Yeah. That, that would count them. Bing Crosby. I don't know if any of the Thin Man movies were nominated. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. No, I think you're right. This might be true. That might be true. That's kind of rare to yeah. do it that well. Yeah. Well, I mean, that Return of times. the King really takes the cake, you know, because it's the yeah. third one. And yes. That picture and that's to even really make a rare. good third movie yeah. is a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> it's right? true. Let alone get it nominated for Best Picture, yeah, and win. Yeah. So, uh, Wayne Fetterman, thank you so much for stopping by the Top Ten Show. It's been my pleasure. He, uh, John, may he's talking about joining us on Saturdays. So let's yeah. positive encouragement. Let's get him give, out there. Give get me a there. month. Very we fun. can use another old guy. Of I course, gotta build of course. my endurance back up, and yeah. then I'll come play. Well, guys, this has been a lot of fun. I'm sorry if I talk too much, but that's my ma- nature, no. and I am very complex. True. And so we learned a lot about Wayne we Fetterman. <laughs> we did. If you want to learn uh, more, uh, you know, <laughs> you can easily find him. Where, where are you on Twitter, Instagram? Is it at Wayne Fetterman? Do you have any kind it's, of- <laughs> it's at Fetterman on Twitter. It's Insta Fetterman on Insta. I don't. Come on, guys, stop it. You don't want. You don't want no, to pick up from the fun. community. I don't. It, it, yeah, it's at at Fetterman. There at you Fetterman. F e d e r m a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let him know that he did not talk too much. Go Let to, him know he was a fantastic guest. <laughs> Go to www.waynefetterman.com if you want to see all his works there. Yeah, all his commercials. Pick up his book. Pick up what's his the name book? of the pistol? Yeah, people? what's the name of the pistol? It's called Maravich. Okay. I'm going to read this book now. I love it. Because I love Pistol Pete, and I, now having met the author, I'm definitely going to read the book. Because I remember you pitched it a couple times already on the show. Yeah. That he wrote the book. So, uh, you know, this is great. Pistol Pete. Um, 
if you want to follow us, uh, what, what, well, uh, we got to close because we have something yeah, else. Let's to do, close. So. That's right. That's right. Well, we, we have get to Wayne do, out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do we have to read the Claiborne Williams? Uh, his yeah, top his list. 10? His list. Let's, our let's, pa- oh, our patron so, to see how yes, he's stacked up. Yes, I want to hear his yes. list. So Claiborne got? had at number ten. He had Chinatown. Whoa, mm-hmm. I like it. Did he talk? Nineteen seventy four. Did he no? talk to you ahead should of time? Should have sent him my list. All right, at number nine. He had one flew over the cuckoo's nest. What's this? Nineteen seventy five. Best picture. I like Claiborne. At number eight, he had Star Wars. 1977. He did not put the new Hope one. I love this kid. So, yeah. Star Wars. Love number, him. Number seven, The Exorcist. Oh, he's a Fetterman fan. Yeah. Yeah. 1973. <laughs> number six, Jaws. Jesus, yeah. this kid's right in my... This yeah, exactly. So far, I've got every one of his movies. Yep, yep. He's, he's about just to in lose, the wrong order, He's about to fine. lose Wayne here. At number five, he has Alien. Oh, dun, 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 dun. At number four, he has Taxi Driver. Number okay. three, so. Apocalypse Now, where it belongs. Uh, <laughs> number two is The Godfather. Okay. And number one is The Godfather Part Two. See, this is the man that gets it. No, this is the man that gets it, although yeah. it's placement on a few other I guess I just don't get it. Yeah. I guess I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> After you sang the praises of both movies, you've just done a 180. You know what? I'm wrong. I'm an idiot. It's fine. Uh, yeah, and this is Clay Williams. I mean, he goes by Clay Williams, but Clay Williams as well. So, Clay, thanks so much for donating uh, to the top ten show Patreon and having your to the at the boss hog level and having your topic mm-hmm. chosen. It happens if you're listening to us. You've been thinking about donating at the at the boss hog level. Donate. We will do your topic. We love talking about it. Matt and I love that you guys are picking some of these topics. So we, yeah, and like and you're inc- making it interesting. It makes it interesting. It encourages us to look at other films. Yeah. Look at look at new I, ways. I, I pitched like two or three or four, but I think the second one out of my mouth was best of seventies. And but but I couldn't even get through the third. And Wayne <laughs> goes best of seventies. Just cut right. me off. I'm like boom. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Williams. He knew. He Thank knew you. Uh, uh, but yeah, we will say goodbye. Thank you yep. so much for coming on, Wayne. This is awesome. Wayne. And you guys are doing more right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah, we have a second part to this, and then we have something else to do as well. Yeah. Best of the 80s you're doing right now. <laughs> right now. <laughs> right now. Okay, Starting right now. Later, guys. <laughs> All right. Well, that was Wayne Fetterman. Uh, he had to go. Uh, yep. He's, he's got to do more writing for the DGAs, so uh, he had to step aside. Thanks uh, for him to him for stopping by, Matt. We are at the uh, and thanks to Clay, Claiborne Williams for that uh, or Clay Williams for that list again and the topic. Uh, we are uh, at this time in the show where we can do some Patreon shoutouts. It's the end of the month. It's the last show of the the uh, month, and that's mm-hmm. when you guys get your shout out once again. Um, if we mispronounce your name, because there was. I know I got tagged on something somewhere. Where someone was like, "Hey, they got my name right this time." There's a good chance we get it wrong this time. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we'll do the best we can. This is all taken from Patreon itself. Some people uh, they didn't have their full name, so I, parenthetically, I put like their the start of their email address, mm-hmm. so they know who they are. Nice. Like to throw in there or okay. Uh, basically, I did the best I could compiling all this. There's there shouldn't be a typo in there. Okay. So I'm not going to be leaving name uh, letters off anyone's name. <laughs> And then we can't tell who it is. Right. But we might not have a full, complete name because you didn't put one in there. And I had to hunt uh, to get it. But anyway, yeah. so from the top, Patreon peeps. Mm-hmm. Patreon. Our patrons, here's your shout-outs. Ba-boom. Starting with... And why did it just get small on Uh-oh. me? Finally. There we go. Mike Barrington. Yeah. Dylan Steiner. Wiley Todd. Camilo Gutierrez. Anthony Castelnova. Drew Enns. Matthew Jasso. Citizen Ugly. And I think it was Brendan or Brandon. Or Brendan. One of those uh, was his email address. I forgot to write that one. So oh, okay. One. It's All right. the only one. Uh, uh, Andrew Hayes. Yes. Robert Haley. Claiborne Williams. There you go. Chris Alessacos. What's Philip up? Philip Renshaw. Uh, Rachel Silvestrini. Hi, Rachel. Jake Higgins. Uh, Martin Borak. Brayton Bizdick. Joey Anthony. Ellis Menchaca. Sean Na- Naughton. Eric Grebner. Trine Mogard. Keaton Reese. Yes. Andrew Marker. Brian Zafferni. Lindsay Toll. Brett Yo. Matthew Picardat. Deborah Torres. Hi, Deborah. Uh, Joey Peter. Tom Cost- Costlany. Yes. Gulick Granarud. Uh, Ed Buskirk. Laura Deverson. Niall Blackie. Simon, Simon Bruyard. You might be right with Simone then. Oh, maybe. Uh, Lawrence Witt. Kristen Smith. Hi, Kristen. Ryan M. Brandos. Chris Jones. David Mitchell Baker. Jack Van Ord. Stephen French. Marcel Barmont. I just want to say it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Loftus. <laughs> Aaliyah Moore. Hi, Aaliyah. Uh, Brandon and it Fuzzy Large. Like was, it. What was it. That was your email. Hello. Carlos Cortez. Robert Cooper. Matthew Thompson. Chris, there was no last name. Gohansj there was go. the email. I like it. Nicholas Smith. Fraser Jubb. Brandon Brown. 
Matthew Hall, Alejandra Padilla, Jason Taylor, Jay Watson, Seth Shearer, Seamus Braytog, Jack Gratis, Ryan Clark, Matthew Lee Cravens, John Holloway, Coop, Cooper Jones, Katie Seven, Cecil Hops, Eric Barrios, Matt John Der Yund. Yeah, Yund maybe. Joseph Bert Whistle. A Giancarlo Simonetta. <laughs> Andy Ortiz. Andrew Berger. Jim Payne. Uh, Yure McGarley. Good job, man. Thank you. Brian Akins. More than likely screw that up. <laughs> Sean Brennan. John Keefe. Oh! <laughs> I got this one last time. Uh, that is Thuzanth. Yes. Suntharlingam. Good. Suntharlingam. I like it. Uh, Brian King. Jeff Saliba. Ian Morgan. Julian Key. Dan Nye. Hey, Dan. Jose De La Torre. Steve Morris, my boy Steve. Josh James. Ricky Rivers. Gordon Rustling. Colin Murray. Jeff Peters. Tyler Spots. Patrick Campbell. Hey, PJ. Kyle Lamb. Francisco Ramiro, uh, Ramirez Burgos. You like, say, you get his Ramirez name Ramirez Burgos. Burgos. Bar Shamrick, I think, I think or Shamrich. Sam, sure. Uh, Thomas Price. Mike Austin. Alexander Marzonia. Uh, the mysterious Nicole A. That's all I had. Yeah. Uh, Sammy Alisa Alisa Haiti nice. Alisa Haiti Alisa, Okay Alisa Haiti Okay Jose Goico Valentin Kevin Hills Luke Larson And finally Nathan Williams There you go Wow So thank you to all of you For the show itself today From Claiborne Williams Yes To um, everyone uh, supporting us From the $5, $5 level on up yeah. Thank you so much Thank you Um we are still working. I actually got some uh, messages today uh-huh. from some people behind the scenes saying, "Hey, what if uh, what if you guys tried this? What if you tried this? Oh, and uh, maybe add a feature or two to uh, Patreon coming up. I don't okay. know. Uh, we we haven't actually sat down to talk about anything because we've no. been so busy between the two of we us. We really have. Um, yeah, yeah, to a degree that I'm I'm dead tired and I still have more stuff to do tonight and yeah. I got stuff to do Sorry, all day man. and night tomorrow night and Saturday and it sucks. I can't oh wait for God. Sunday. Oh my God, man! No, you can't get here quick enough. <laughs> And yet I don't want to live through the next three days. Um, but yeah, thank you to all of you. We have something we forgot to talk about beforehand, but we should, we'll talk about it in between, I guess. Okay. Well, if, we, if you uh, want to donate to our Patreon or want to add yourself to the list, please go to www.patreon.com backslash the top 10. Like Matt said, uh, there, you, guys can come up, you guys are coming up with ideas and content, and we may be able to use some of that going forward. Uh, we do the Thunderdomes. We do... Uh, we do sometimes pick your topics if you donate at that level. Yeah, we've level. done a Q&A just for you guys in yes. the past. Yeah, yeah. So there, we're always coming up with stuff. And so you donate donate what you can if you can. And if you can't donate, that's fine too. Just push, uh, uh, promote the show on your, all your social media. You know, we can't have enough fans. It builds, it builds, it builds, it grows and grows. And yeah, grows. we're, so we we're really doing this it. together. You uh, are helping us grow yep. and we're helping you just whatever with your commute sure. enjoy you know just yeah. escape reality for an hour two hours whatever the case is exactly and uh i'd be remiss if i didn't bring up that uh a couple of our fans mm-hmm. have a movie that has been nominated yes. for an oscar an what? animation called loving vincent how insane is this yeah it's adam bonaventura machajewski sure Massajewski. yes mesa juicy mm-hmm. or uh, juicy or uh yeah whatever one of those three <laughs> and uh, Anna Zonka. Okay. And uh, I know Adam hit us up on Twitter and said, hey, I got this coming out. And at the time, we were like, oh, that's awesome, man. You know, good luck. Yeah. I hope it ends yeah. up great. I, yeah. I watched the trailer. It looked really interesting. Yeah. And uh, he posted on Facebook, and he was like, these assholes didn't say anything on air. Yeah, but and I was that's like, not true. I was like, well, I don't know if we brought it, but you know, we said something. It's not yeah. like we gave you the cold shoulder, but I, we didn't say it on air. I didn't yeah. know that was a hurdle that we had to clear, but I mentioned you're not it on, wrong. Listen, I mentioned it on Movie Talks. You can kiss my ass. Like, honestly, I mentioned yeah, it on Adam. Movie Talk, and I said how great it was going to be that a Vincent Van Gogh animated film. I promoted it on Movie Talk when we had to talk about it one of those Fridays. I remember, because I love Vincent Van Gogh so much, and I remember seeing the trailer for this, and I was blown away. So much time and effort went into creating. I think it was seven years, nine years of creating this animated film, yeah. which is incredible. So the minute that both of you painted... Much love. Thank you so much for reaching out and commenting on the Facebook page. You can give us all the shit you want. It doesn't mean... Oh, it's, we, it's harmless. Yeah, it's harmless. Being, playful, yeah. which I respect and appreciate. But, you know, we are happy as hell that by 
some tangential way, we are connected to this year's Oscars, well, and that's amazing. Just know that if you do this in the future and you have something that's potentially going to be nominated and then we don't mention it, but you take us to task for that, then we will use our bully pulpit to get you a Razzie. You yeah. know? We will come out in full force against you, Absolutely. Adam. And Anna, you're getting sucked into this. Absolutely. Uh, but at the same time, we, we should have brought it up. If, if any fair. of you out there are doing you know, amazing things like that within the world of, of movies or TV yeah. or whatever the case is, let us know. Yeah. Uh, if, if it, you know, we didn't slight you. We just forgot, at least on the show, on this show. Uh, I know John brought it up on Movie Talk. I was, I was telling people around L.A. Yeah. I was walking around, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to... I'm trying to Act like I said anything yeah. more than I did on Twitter. I don't yeah. know if I did or did not, but uh, it's really awesome. So congrats <laughs> to you and to Anna and to everybody that worked on that. Yeah, and, and if you haven't seen it, go see it. If it's in, out in a the movie theater, sometimes yeah. the, the Academy puts out these movies just before the awards. Yeah. Fingers ceremonies. crossed you win. Yeah, fingers, uh, it's at the Sunset Five, I think, here in L.A. So if you want to go see it in your respective town, look for it. Loving Vincent. I mean, it might be available to stream on one of these services. I'm not sure. But it's an incredibly animated film, especially if you love Vincent Van Gogh and you love the art. So, it's, uh, But there it is. There's yeah. uh, today's show. Thank That's you all to the Patreon people. Uh, thank you to Claiborne Williams yep. for the great, the fantastic topic. Yeah. And uh, just, yeah, let us talk about all kinds of different movies that maybe we haven't gotten to yet. That's right. Um, or haven't talked about enough. Um, and that's it. That's it for me. My name is Matt Nost at Matt Nost, M A T T K N O S T. Matt, will you tell them the Facebook group? Sure. It's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the top 10 show with the number 10. Awesome. And I'm at, I'm at the Roca says R O C H A on Twitter and on Instagram. Thanks everyone again for uh, listening to this episode. And, uh, we will talk to you next week on the top 10 show. Uh-huh.